five, four, three. Welcome here for game two of today's double header on the banks of the Hocking River in beautiful Athens, Ohio. We've got a sunny day here, not a cloud in the sky as the Ohio Bobcats will take on the Toledo Rockets here for some MAC action. Game one of the day's doubleheader was taken by Toledo as they took that one 11 to five over the Bobcats. And here for the second game, the Bobcats will be starting Brendan Roeder here on this game. This is Roeder, I know we were talking about this as I'm Cade Williamson joined by my colleague Zach Mothersball here this afternoon. I know we were talking about this before the game, Zach, that this is Roeder's first start so far. He's usually the guy that comes out of the pen for, for the Bobcats up here on the bump today. Yeah, this is something they did, uh, This was it was yesterday, Hudson Bunkle, uh, he started the first game through about 2.1. They've tampered with the opening idea. Yeah, or correction, this is Brendan Roeder's fourth start of the season. I know we've talked about the, the opener and the starter here is mainly the two main starters for the Bobcats are Eddie Cutt and Tate as well. Those are the two main guys that they usually throw and go deep into the games. But so far for Roeder on the season, he's got a 2.89 ERA as now will take you around the horn here for the outfield starting in left will be Spencer Harbert starting in center will for the Bobcats that is is Isaiah Peterson starting in right is AJ Roush at third base is Nick Dolan at shortstop is Xavier Hennigus getting his first action here so far in this series at second base is Michael Richardson and at first Colin Kasperbauer and behind the dish is Mason Minzy the backstop for the Bobcats is leading off this ball game will be Jaron Williams the shortstop for the Toledo Rockets here Jaron Williams played a great game in the first part of this doubleheader, going three for four. We'll see if he can keep that up in this one. As that first pitch was in there for a strike, and getting ahead in the count there is Roeder. Wind's been very calm this afternoon, blowing a little bit out to the right center field, and that one will find the outer half of the plate for a strike once again, and Roeder's worked himself ahead in this count 0-2 to Williams. I think that was the second one that Williams didn't quite agree with. Gave a little head nod back to the umpire after that second pitch. Yeah, I know in that first game of this doubleheader, it seemed like we had a big zone as that was a half-hearted swing there, but it's fielded well by Roeder. He'll throw on to Casper Bauer. A little soft toss there, and that will be out number one here. Now we'll run you through the Toledo Rockets lineup to start this one from one to nine. Leading off there was Jaron Williams. Behind him is Scott Makowitz, who is now stepping up to the box, playing center field on the day. Cervello will be batting third, playing right. Pike will be designate, the designated hitter once again this afternoon. Sykes is playing first. Darren Davis at third base, right behind the dish. Kongzak in left field, and Fry at second base. And you saw on that uh, last hitter for Jaron Williams, when he reached out across the plate to get an outside pitch, that's an effect of what happens when you don't feel you're getting the right plate and the outside pitch is getting called. He starts to reach out. He's afraid it might get called a strike. Bounces an easy one back to the pitcher for the first out of the game. Yeah, a little bit of a defensive swing right there as the pitch from Roeder. The second pitch of this at bat will be in there for a strike as the count is now even up at ones. One down here in the top of the first. And hitting now, Scott Makowitz. Game one of today's doubleheader. He went one for three with two RBIs, a walk, a hit by pitch, and a jack in that one. Pitch from Roeder will be swung right through for a strike. So get ahead in this count now, 1-2. Roeder so far this season, uh, Bobcat pitchers that have been in more than one game has the lowest ERA, like we said in the pregame, 2.89 ERA in 18 and two-thirds innings so far, only giving up six earned runs on the season as that ball is slicing toward line, right field line, in there for a base hit, and rounding first is Makowitz. Do it well by Roush, he'll throw into second base, and it'll be cut off by Richardson, and it'll be a sliding double there for the two-hole for the Toledo Rockets, Scott Makowitz. As now Toledo has a runner in scoring position as they get to the heart of their order. Makowitz, that's the second time he saw that dealt low and in pitch, and for a lefty, that's a sweet spot. The first time he swung through it, that one he caught. Got it to left field or got it to right field and got two bases on that one. Yeah, kept it inside, hands inside there, took it right where it was pitched, put it right over the first baseman Casper Bauer's head. That'll be a base hit here for Toledo to start this ball game. Is now stepping into the box will be the three hole this afternoon. With the man in scoring position, it is Cervello you want at the dish. He's got the highest average for anybody on Toledo right now, and he's swinging a hot bat. That is John Cervello. Here at the plate is that first pitch will be a ball, a little inside, says the umpire. Count now 1-0. One down here, still in the top of the first for the Toledo Rockets, who are not a great offensive team so far this season, especially in the MAC play as they rank 10th 
an average as the pitch there from Roeder will be once again inside for a ball. Count now 2-0. And in run scored for Toledo so far this season, they rank sixth in the MAC in total runs, about middle of the pack so far. But average-wise, they are second to last with a 251 average for their team. Yeah, they had a tough series of um, Ball State. It was last weekend. They scored 11 total runs in that entire four-game series. They put up an 11 spot in back-to-back -back games now. And Toledo, after that first victory over Ohio this afternoon, from what we are aware right now, are now jumped to tied for third place in the MAC so far in the standings, while the Bobcats are eighth right now. Toledo 500 on the season, trying to get over 500, as well as being 500 in MAC play. As the delivery there from Roeder was out, in the dirt, good stop there by Minzy. Count now 3-1 to the three hole for the Rockets. A little bit of a sunny day here. We've had some rough weather over the past couple days here in Athens, Ohio. And you want to love to see the sun out as that ball is chopped to the shortstop. Hennigus and he'll throw on the first to Kasperbauer and get out number two, but advancing on that play was Makowitz. Now the designated hitter and a constant power threat, Garrett Pike, will step up to the plate. In the game one of today's doubleheader, he went two for five with a run and two RBIs in that game. And on the season, Pike, 283 hitter. He works himself into the box. Order will come set at the belt. And the delivery will be another half-hearted swing. Charging it is Nick Dolan on the run. Throws from the mound and will get Casper Bauer. And the Bobcats will exit the top of the first unscathed. Score knotted up at zero. And we'll take you to the bottom of the first. Warehouse Tire in Athens is your locally owned and operated auto and truck tire center. At Warehouse Tire, we focus on customer service with a professional staff and a huge inventory of wheels and tires for a variety of applications, including farm and industrial. We feature top brands, including Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroyal. Warehouse Tire is also a full-service auto service shop. Let us help with all of your under-vehicle maintenance, including brakes, shocks, struts, and alignments. Visit Warehouse Tire on Hebbardsville Road in Athens or online at warehousetireinc.com. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, $1 will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Ohio University Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. Welcome back here to the home half of the first. First inning is sponsored by McDonald's. Has four Athens area locations. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Has the home half of the first here for the Bobcats, and they'll have their first plate appearances here, and we'll read off their lineup one to nine. Leading off in the typical leadoff position is Isaiah Peterson playing center field on the day. Batting second, A.J. Rausch in right field. Colin Casper Bauer batting third at first base. Mates and Minzy hitting cleanup on the afternoon behind the dish. Spencer Harbert in left field hitting fifth. Will Sturrock, the designated hitter in this game this afternoon, batting sixth. Michael Richardson at second base, batting seventh. Nick Dolan playing third base and batting eighth. And in the nine spot is Xavier Hennigas, the shortstop for the Bobcats. Very talented top four for the Bobcats with Isaiah Peterson and Casper Bauer both being in the top six in the MAC in average. That's what you want at the top of your lineup to get guys on, especially at the start of the game. As up there on the bump for Delito is Cameron Sinski. Has a 2.14 ERA so far this season. This is his second start as the first pitch that he throws this afternoon is fouled off and away down the left field line out of play. And Peterson looking to try and jump on it there. In case you missed the action that happened in the, the away half of the first, Fudo had a hit there from their two home Makowitz. He had a double down the right field line, but was all for naught as he was unable to score as the second pitch in there from Sinski is a strike and now into a hole is Isaiah Peterson. Peterson, like you said, an effective leadoff hitter. 367 average so far in the season as he gets 
Chopped there, swings right through that, swung the sword, and that will be a strikeout there for Sinski, and out number one for the Rockets on three pitches to the leadoff as Peterson's kind of kicking himself after that one. It's a lot of half-hearted swings we've seen, two from Toledo in the top half of the inning, and then another one right there from Isaiah Peterson. As now the two-hole playing right field on the day. A.J. Roush will step into the box, the Central Ohio product, as the first pitch there from Sinski finds the outer half of the zone for a strike. As Sinski's looking to be effective so far this afternoon, you can definitely tell that he try, likes to get ahead and counts, and that might lead to his low ERA. He's got a 1-1 win-loss record on the season as a bunt there. Right back to Sinski, he'll field it well, and a throw errant there as A.J. Roush will round first and work his way, standing up into second base. As he'll reach there, I'm not sure how they'll score that. I'm assuming it will be an errant throw there from Sinski. As he fielded it well, as Roush's bunt was right back to the mound. Sinski just had to come right off the mound, right in front of it, and field it, and just threw it errant over there and out of the reach. Yeah, I'm not sure if Sinski maybe rushed that throw over to first. He had a lot of time. That bunt did go right back to him, as you said. But he left that one outside, down toward the dugout side of the first base. And they will pull that one in air. That will go down as an air on the pitcher, pitcher Cameron Sinski. Is now the three-hole Colin Kasperbauer will step into the box here for the Bobcats. Kasperbauer was one for three in the first game with an RBI and a strikeout as he's first pitch swinging down the first base line. Hits off the railing there in the dugout. That will go down as a foul ball and strike number one. One down here, runner on second base is A.J. Roush, who reached on an air. Aaron thrown from Cameron Sinski, the pitcher. Up on the bump this afternoon, telling the slab for the Toledo Rockets. That pitch is swung on, and it will find its way into a gap. And rounding third base now is Roush. He'll come home. The throw will be cut off. No, not cut off, and it will work itself to the plate. But in standing is A.J. Roush, and the Bobcats have a run here in the bottom of the first. As an RBI single there, squirt by the right side of the infield for Colin Kasperbauer. And the throw there from Cervello in right field was all for naught. Is up standing is A.J. Roush. And that's t a tough start for Toledo, getting an error, putting a guy on second to start this game. They're, the, as we talked about, they're a great pitching team. They don't allow a large ERA, but errors will affect you in that kind of way. Now the four hole, clean up hitter in the afternoon, Mason Minzy, step into the box. Minzy's having himself a decent series. In game one of the series, he was responsible for the walk-off homer in the bottom of the 10th that gave the Bobcats game one of this four-game series, the only game that the Bobcats have won so far in this series. As the first pitch was high for a ball. Sinski will try to induce a double play ball here as the infield, middle infield that is, shaded toward the middle is a swing and a miss there as Sinski took something off of that one. Looked like a little bit of a change up right there. Yeah, yeah. Right -hander. Had, had that ball on a string. Exactly, Caught great Minzie pitch there. With that. Minzie was way out on his front foot there and couldn't slow down his hands. Counting on to the up at ones now. Once again on the outer half of the plate, swing and a miss there from Minzy and a good, solid pitch from Sinski. As they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Sinski goes right back, same location, seemingly the same pitch, and the same result. Yeah, a great pitch there from Cameron Sinski. He's now ahead in the count here, and he goes right back to it once again. Looked like on the outer half of the plate, but Minzy finally times that one up just a little bit. Even if he is out in front, he'll foul it off and stay alive here in the box. Sinski out of Granger, Indiana, getting six feet, two inches tall, sophomore. As that pitch is skied out into right field, camping up under it is John Cervello, and it'll find his glove for out number two. And Minzy will jog right back to the dugout. As now we'll read you the Kent State defensive lineup this afternoon. And left field is Konchak. Center field is Makowitz, and right field is John Cervello. And now we'll go around the horde in the infield. Darren Davis playing third on the afternoon. Jaron Williams at short. Fry will be at second base. Sykes is at first, and behind the dish is right. Up on the mound, like we've talked about, is Sinski. This is first pitch there. To the five spot, Spencer Harbert, ever dangerous for the Bobcats, is in there for a strike looking. Harbert, not a guy that usually hits for great average. Only a 218 hitter, but he got that ball. A little skied, though, into left field, and that one will find the glove 
of the left fielder, Konchak, and that'll be the end of the first. As the Bobcats do play one there in the bottom of the first, thanks to an RBI single from Colin Kasperbauer, and we'll take you to the top of the second. Bobcats up one nothing. Located on 741 East State Street, Steak and Shake is serving up handmade milkshakes, fresh pressed steak burgers, and crispy shoestring fries cooked right to order. Kick off your day with our breakfast served until 11 a.m. And don't forget to join us for happy hour drinks and shakes on weekdays from 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. Left corner for three, bang! And oh baby, what a first half it's been. In sight, it must be right. We'll see you there at Steak and Shake Athens. When you order your groceries online with ClickList from Kroger, you can do your shopping anytime, anywhere, like the gym, the office, or your favorite comfy couch. And whether you place your order on your phone, tablet, or computer, it's still your neighborhood Kroger. So you'll find all the fresh choices, low prices, and great deals you love. And you'll save time, too. Try ClickList from Kroger with same-day pickup. Check it out at Kroger.com. Fresh food, low prices at Kroger. We're here in the top of the second as the Toledo Rockets will have their second and that bat here so far this afternoon. And we had a hit there in the top of the first. It was from their two hole Scott Makowitz. Is now stepping up to the plate as the first baseman this afternoon, Mason Sykes. Still up there on the mound for the Bobcats. Brendan Roeder. Roeder had a solid first inning besides giving up that hit there. It was a double down the right field line as the first pitch there from Roeder will be in the dirt for a ball. We left the last inning talking about a guy who doesn't hit for high average and Sykes here, he's the leader in home runs in the MAC, tied for first with eight and the leader in RBIs with 31. But he does strike out a lot, but he's, I mean, he's got a lot of launch angle and he's swinging for the fences every time. And that's something that you see more and more often in baseball itself overall is more of those three true outcome guys, guys that are usually just kind of walk strike out or hit for power meaning in home runs and that's where you see those home run numbers especially from a guy like Sykes the big old first baseman he's 2-0 in the count now and pitch from Roeder swinging a miss there yeah, the more baseball progressed the more they started teaching launch angles to the batters when you swing you swing up it used to be you swing level try and knock one into center field but now you swing up and you swing for the fences every time yeah the ways of the of the hit uh, the hitters with high average and 400 guys are all for not is a good piece there from Sykes, just fielded well by Xavier Hennigas playing shortstop here this afternoon, getting his first action so far in the season, uh, series correction. As there'll be one down here in the top of the second. And now the third baseman, Darren Davis, work himself into the box. Davis so far in the season, the 227 hitter is coming in there on the third base line, the third baseman, Nick Dolan. Take away the bun option here from Davis. First pitch from Roeder will be out off the plate for a ball. Count now 1-0. The guy playing the hot corner this afternoon, Davis. He's played and started in all games so far this year for the Toledo Rockets as that pitch is in there for a strike and the count now even up at once. One down here. Toledo has played a lot of games so far this season. They're up around 30 games, which is one of the most in the MAC. So it's impressive that Darren Davis has played all of them in this shorter period of time. That pitch is once again in there for a strike. As the count now in favor of the pitcher Roeder. As his battery mate Minzy will give him the signs here. He'll try to get a punch out. No kick and fire, and swung right through that one was Davis, and that'll be strikeout number one this afternoon for Brennan Roeder. Looked like high heat for the third strike there for Roeder. He went a little high and outside, and Darren Davis chased it. Yeah, great pitching there. As he'll try to induce a 1-2-3 inning here for Toledo. As now the catcher, Trey Wright, will work himself into the box. Wait, did not see action in that first game of today's doubleheader, but did play in the... Other two games of the series as Roeder's pitch is in there. So far in the series, Wright only has has gone two for eight with a double, an RBI, and two runs. 
Well, it was a walk there. Trey Wright, he's a redshirt freshman this year. He was injured all of 2021, didn't play a single game, only played 14 in 2020. As the pitch there from Roeder in the dirt, right out of Jackson, Ohio, the Maslin Jackson High School there near Canton. It's outside the Canton area, that is. is pitch there from Roeder will be low and in for a ball. Count now 2-1 in favor of the catcher, Trey Wright. Roeder turns, kicks, and fires, and that pitch will be in there on the inner half of the plate for a strike. Count now evened up at twos. Two balls, two strikes, two outs now in the top of the second. For the Toledo Rockets, the score is 1-0 in favor of the Ohio Bobcats over the Rockets, thanks to an errant throw. As the 2-2 delivery will be fouled off the handle there. Ran a little inside, but Trey Wright was choked up and in on the plate there, trying to protect, and that one went off his handle. Sometimes you see that. Not very often, but sometimes you do when guys crowd the plate and an inside fastball is thrown in there, an inside pitch in general. It goes off the handle, and they stay alive. So it'll just go down as a foul ball? Yeah, I heard that ball hit something. I wasn't sure if it maybe caught the batter or if it just hit the um, bat, but foul ball, and that'll keep the count at where it is. Out of the two is the delivery. As that ball will be chopped, fielded by Roeder, he'll throw on to first. Casper Bauer has to make a little bit of an acrobatic effort over there at first, but it'll be an out nonetheless, and the Bobcats will get out of the top of the second unscathed as we'll travel to the bottom of the second. If you can dream it, you can do it. Maybe your dream is to have a vacation cabin in the woods. Or maybe your dream is to open up a cat cafe. Uh, who ordered the milk? At Ohio University Credit Union, your dreams are our dreams. And we have the money to lend that will make them a reality. OUCU offers great loan rates, flexible terms, and fast responses on your application. Not a member? You can join. Really, stop by a branch or visit OUCU.org. Equal housing opportunity, loan subject to credit approval. Federal insured by NCUA, MLS number 433809. These days, we're all doing a lot more virtually, which is why at Ohio Health, we've expanded our virtual care options and availability to make it even easier to get safe expert care at home. That includes virtual visits with over a thousand trusted providers in every medical specialty. Learn more about our virtual health options at ohiohealth.com slash virtual health. We're here in the bottom of the second. The second inning is brought to you by People's Bank. People's Bank, working together, building success. In case you haven't tuned in yet, Bobcats lead the Toledo Rockets 1-0 here. After an RBI single from the third base, or correction, first baseman this afternoon, Colin Kasterbauer put it in between the first and second baseman on the right side of the infield and scored A.J. Roush, who reached on an air in the bottom of the first. And now stepping into the box is the designated hitter, Will Sturrock. Zach's still up there in the mound. That pitch is high now for a ball. The count 1-0 here. Cameron Sinski up there on the mound for the Toledo Rockets. More, been more of a pen option so far this season. Has two saves on the year. 21.1 innings pitch, or 21, correction, 21 innings pitch even. Well, even up five earned runs. And 15 hits so far in the season. The 1-1 delivery there will find the outer half of the plate for a strike right on the black right there. Yeah, we were talking about it uh, earlier in the game, the opener, and how you throw a guy from the bullpen out to start the game off. It's becoming more and more popular, and the Rockets decided to do it today. As the 1-2 delivery will work a little into the dirt and away, almost into the left-handed batter's box. Count even up now at twos for Will Sturrock. Sturrock's seen a little bit more action as the season's gone on for the Bobcats, hitting 350 
on the season, appearing in 13 games, starting in four, this being his fifth start and his 14th appearance on the season. The count now evened up at 3-2 after the 2-2 pitch was once again outside for a ball. Got away from the catcher, Trey Wright. Sturrock going four for seven in his pinch hit appearances so far. Must have earned him a spot in the starting lineup today. As the payoff pitch there from Sinski is out of play, fouled back. And staying alive in the box will be Will Sturrock. Sturrock so far on the season, seven for 20. Like we said, that 350 average. Only has one extra base hit, that being a double. Three RBIs so far. Payoff pitch once again will be low and away. Gets by Trey Wright. Now it'll be a ball four. And Sturrock will get a free 90 and work his way down to first base. As now stepping to the plate will be the second baseman, Michael Richardson for the Ohio Bobcats. Richardson, 235 hitter so far in the season. He's played and started all 25 games this season for the Bobcats, who after that loss in game one of today's doubleheader, dropped to 12 and 14 on the season, six and nine in MAC play. As an, a, a sacrifice bunt attempt from Richardson, works itself toward the Bobcats dugout, but it'll be a foul ball as Wright pops right out of his stance and try to get that ball, track it down. Bobcats looking to take advantage of that free base they were just given on the walk, move him over to second, see if they can't um, get another run in off of a free batter or a free runner. Over there at first base, Will Sturrock after a walk. The pitch there high. Sinski. Count now even up at once. Would be surprised if Richardson squared to bunt here once again. Sturrock over there at first. Not exactly a speed threat. No stolen bases so far in the season. As the pitch there will be inside for a ball, looked close. Wright didn't get the call there as he tried to frame that one up. The Bobcats were predicted to be seventh in the 2022 MAC preseason coaches poll. Toledo predicted to be fifth and had one first place vote. As that pitch is lined down the left field line, good piece of hitting there from Richardson. It'll get down. Due by Konchak, he'll get it in, throws the second base, and sliding in there for a double will be Michael Richardson. So now the Bobcats once again knocking on the door here in the bottom of the second with two runners in scoring position. After a solid double there, great piece of hitting from Michael Richardson. Absolutely, and that was a well-done job by Konchak in left field. That ball looked like it might have been headed for the wall, and if it did get to the wall, I think that runner scores from first. Cuts it off, though, now that's second and third. Still no outs, so a good spot for the Bobcats. But I think that was going to be a run if he didn't cut that off in left field. Yeah, Sturrock was on his horse there. Ended up getting into third base. Is now runners on second and third here for the Bobcat eight hole. Nick Dolan. Dolan's got seen a little bit more action here as they've got deeper into the season as he'll have a check swing there, but it'll be in the dirt. No, says the home play umpire. No, says the appeal. And the count is now 1-0 in favor of the hitter, Nick Dolan. Dolan so far on the season. A 170 hitter. He's played in 18 games, started for th and 13 of those for the Bobcats. Eight for 47 on the season with four total extra base hits as that pitch is on the inner half of the plate for a strike there from Sinski. It's counting now even up at once. Saw Dolan give a little head nod after that uh, pitch was called a strike. He came into today with eight hits and eight walks on the season, so he's got a great eye at the plate, and he definitely was watching that first strike all the way in. As a little bit of a breaking ball there will be a little high, says the home plate umpire for a ball count. Now 2-1. Interesting def defensive setup right now for Toledo as they have their corners in, more so their first baseman over there, Mason Sykes. And the middle infielders are deep and playing shaded toward the middle, almost straight up. As a swing, hard swing and a miss there from Nick Dolan. Wanted that one. Swung right through it, count now even up at twos. Yeah, Dolan felt every single bit of that one. He really wanted to put that one deep into the outfield. Dolan was 0 for 3 in game 1 of today's doubleheader with a strikeout in that game. And he has two hits so far in the series, and he'll want another one here, but he'll get rung up right there as that pitch found the left corner on the knees right there. A solid pitch from Sinski as he'll sit down, throw him a chair to Dolan. Now the nine hole, Xavier Hennigas playing shortstop in the afternoon. Getting his first 
appearance so far in the series. And he gets so far on the season. 340 hitter. He's played and started. A correction, played in 16 games, started in 15 of those. As he'll square to bunt, and that bunt will be down the first base line, and it'll work itself foul as it'll be touch foul there from the first baseman, Mason Sykes. And he gets one in that one as it looked like more of a safety squeeze right there with one down here in the bottom of the second, and runners on second and third here for the shortstop. Put a little spin on that. It must have gotten that spin off the bat because it bounced in play and went out. But that looked like a good bunt, and maybe he had a chance to get to first on that one because Sykes would have had to flip that back to the pitcher. And pitcher Sinski would have had to work up the line right there as well. And sometimes it's tough to work up the line. We've seen multiple times so far this season. I know in that Kent State series they had some trouble. Kent State's pitching had some trouble working up the line when the ball was hit more toward the right-hand side of the first baseman. It's an off-speed pitch there from Sinski. He's in the dirt for a ball. Count even up at once. One down here in the bottom of the second. Bobcats have runners in scoring position. Will Sturrock on third. Michael Richardson on second. Sturrock reached on a walk. And Richardson had a double down the left field line. As that pitch will be a little inside since the home plate umpire for a ball. So won the count now. Sykes still playing up to where, where the green colored turf meets the dirt colored turf there. Can't really say he's up on the grass. <laughs> I mean, when you're playing on turf, it's not exactly up on the grass. It's all the same type of material out there. But baseball fans will definitely get my reference there as that pitch will be high and out for a ball. And now a hitter's count for Xavier Hennigus, 3-1 here. Hennigus, like we said, has a high average so far this season. Only has a total of four extra base hits so far, five RBIs. As he'll look to improve those statistics here with this at-bat. The 3-1 delivery will be in there, an off-speed pitch finds the strike zone there from Sinski. Count now evened up, or correction, count now runs full. Though uh, an extra base hit isn't exactly what he's looking for. If you can drop one in, you should be able to score two. Put the Bobcats up 3 nothing. Yeah, he'll look to get past the infield, find some green out there in the outfield. As the payoff pitch from Sinski will be swung right through from Hennigas, strike three. That'll be the second strikeout this inning for Sinski, the pitcher up there for the Toledo Rockets. Well done working back in that count for Sinski. He was down 3-1, and with the guy on second and a guy on third, that was a very good count for Hendegas. As now the leadoff hitter, Isaiah Peterson, will step into the box. He struck out in his first appearance. Played appearance that was this afternoon in this game. The Bobcats trying not to leave runners out there on base. Sinski's pitch will be strike, says the home plate umpire. Must have been in there for a strike, even though Peterson had a little bit of a check swing right there. Sinski will get his signs from his battery mate, Trey Wright. And the delivery will run a little inside. Almost caught the elbow there of Isaiah Peterson, but he tucked and turned away from that one. Count now runs even at ones. That did just quite skate past his elbow. I thought it might have hit him. Didn't have a reaction, though. Peterson is a transfer from Iowa Western. Was a two, 2017 Nebraska Baseball Player of the Year in high school. As he'll swing that one, and it'll be chopped out to the second baseman. He'll throw on to Sykes at first, and that'll be out number three as Toledo works themselves into a hole but gets out of it thanks to two strikeouts from Sinski. As now we'll travel to the top of the third. You're listening to Ohio Baseball. At People's Bank, our vision is to be the best community bank in America. We focus on building relationships with our clients and offering cutting edge financial products. People's Bank is proud to support the local communities in which we work and live. This is Ashley Brown, People's Bank Vice President and Regional Manager, and we would love a chance to earn your business. People's Bank, working together, building success. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. 
Let's go Cats. Let's go Labatt Blue Light. When you drink a pristine Canadian Pilsner, you're good at beer. Bobcats fans, grab a Labatt Blue Light and be good at beer. Always enjoy responsibly. Copyright 2021 Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. All rights reserved. Labatt, registered U.S. trademark of Labatt Brewing Company, LTD. We're here in the top of the third now. Scores one nothing in favor of the Ohio Bobcats as they played at that one in the bottom of the first thanks to an RBI single from the first baseman Colin Casperbauer. Now stepping into the box. Kent State is their left fielder. Caden Konchak with the first pitch there from Roeders in there for a strike. Found the inner half of the plate. Second pitch here, a one delivery from Roeders, chopped over to the first baseman, Casper Bauer. He'll flip on to Roeder, he'll step on first, and that will be out number one there for the Bobcats here in the bottom, uh, or correction, the top of the third. As Roeders kept that pitch count down so far to start this game. Here for the Bobcats, working into his third inning of work. Yes, he's been throwing a great game, including that rollover there by Konchak to the right side. As now the nine hole, Brian Fry. Come to the plate, playing second base in this game. Bryce so far this series. As that pitch there from Roeder will be a ball low. Like I was saying about Fry so far this series. One for one, only played in game two. At the plate, at correction, had a plate appearance, had plate appearances in game two. As the 1-0 delivery will be in there for a strike from Roeder. As back to Fry, he's only had plate appearances in game two of this four-game series. He did come in as a defensive substitution in game three, that being game one of today's doubleheader. He's been one for one at the plate with one run, a walk, a hit by pitch, and a stolen base. As that pitch will be lined out to the left center field gap, and it will get down for a base hit from Fry. He'll round first. It'll be fielded by Peterson, and he'll throw into the infield, and that'll be a stand-up double there for the nine-hole, Brian Fry, and that's exactly what you want out of your nine-hole as he'll turn it over to the top of the order. Very good piece of hitting there by Brian Fry. A little bit outside and low, and he just pushed it into that left center gap. It's called going with the baseball. As it was an outside pitch and took it right where it was, kept his hands inside and poked it out to the opposite field. Is now Kansas State knocking on the door here with a runner in scoring position out there on second base. So now the leadoff hitter, Jaron Williams, will come to the plate. Williams 0 for 1 so far in the afternoon. As Roeder's delivery, will be a swing and a miss there from Williams. Good pitch there from Roeder. The Bobcats will be looking for Roeder to go a little deep here. Like we said, he's been a little, little bit of a mix so far this season for the Bobcats as he's started three games, this being his fourth this afternoon. Appearing at seven, this is his eighth. We saw it in the last game. Hopefully we don't see it, or hopefully we don't see it again. For as squaring the bunt there, fielded by Roeder. He'll throw on to first base, almost an errant throw. But Kasperbauer will field that one well through to his glove side. Kasperbauer had to make a decent effort to go get that ball. And that will go down as a sacrifice. 1-3. As now Ken, or Toledo will have runner on third here. In the two hole, Scott Makowitz will step to the plate. That's the third throw we've seen today that may have been a little bit, of little bit tough from the pitcher. Uh, Roeder had another one earlier this game that was a little high and had to be corralled by Casper Bauer. As the first pitch there to Makowitz is swung on and missed for a strike. Makowitz hit 305, slugged seven home runs, and tallied 36 RBIs in 43 games as a freshman in 2021 for the Toledo Rockets. The 0 1 delivery will be in there for a strike. Found it right down the heart of the plate there. To Makowitz, a sophomore out of Millbury, Ohio. Uh, 
as Roeder will come set at the bell here and we'll try to work out of this one. The pitch will be skied high out into shallow right field as calling off the second baseman Richardson will be A.J. Roush. It'll find his glove for out number three and the Bobcats will get out of the top of the third unscathed. They still lead one to nothing and we'll travel to the bottom of the third. Bobcat fans, the Hugh White Family of Dealerships is your hometown Athens dealer. And to show our commitment to the community, we're offering free car washes for Ohio University students and faculty, as well as college grad discounts with all of our new brands. But that's not all. We provide free concierge service for faculty. We'll pick up your vehicle and drop it back off after service. Take advantage of our leases and under $200 per month. Come visit us on North Columbus Road, less than five minutes from campus or online at visithughwhite.com. And remember, if the deal is right, it must be Hugh White. Whether you're coming to Athens to root on the Bobcats, visiting friends and family, or just in town for business, the Hampton Inn in Athens wants to be your home away from home. With 86 sparkling rooms, complimentary high-speed internet, hot breakfast served each morning, and a spa and business center, you can expect a great night stay with service that will bring you back. Visit us on the web at HamptonInn.com. That's HamptonInn.com. And go Bobcats! Back here in the bottom of the third. Third inning action is sponsored by Union Street Diner. Check them out online at unionstreetdiner.com. As the Bobcats do up in this inning, they'll go two, three, four here. As Roush, Casper Bauer, and Minzy will be due up in this half inning. Still up on there on the mound is Sinski. And his third inning of work here for the Rockets is his first pitch there to the two-hole A.J. Roush will run a little outside for a ball. Roush reached on an air. His last plate appearance, it was a bunt back to the mound to Sinski. He fielded it and threw it errantly. Out of reach for Sykes over there at first base. And Roush in the bottom of the first came around a score. Thanks to Casper Bauer's RBI single in that one. The count 2-0 here to the Bobcat right fielder. It'll run now to 3-0 as that pitch will run outside and almost into the left-handers batter's box for a ball. Something interesting about A.J. Roush is back in my high school playing days, I actually played against him. About two years ago in 2020, the summer of 2020, I played against A.J. Roush. I didn't know it at the time, but uh, he was committed to Ohio, and now here I am calling his games as that 3-0 pitch will be right down Broadway for a strike. Helps you get to know him better, you know? You yeah, call his I game guess, a little I, better. I, I, I guess so. I mean, when you know a guy that you've played with or played against even, it's it's a little bit better because you know how they play, that you know how they are. Uh, it was a little bit of summer ball out there when I played against him as he'll foul that 3-1 delivery out and out of play. Count now evened up. Our correction runs full at 3-2. As Roush and myself both from – the Central Ohio area, you're basically bound sometimes when you play, you know, in summer ball leagues to run into some guys that are going to go play some great, great places as the payoff pitch will run outside there for ball four. And A.J. Roush will have himself a free 90. And the Bobcats will have themselves a base runner. And Casper Bauer will look to capitalize here once again as in his first plate appearance he had that RBI single in the bottom of the first that drove in A.J. Roush and now he'll have an even wider gap there on the right side of the infield as the middle infielders are playing shaded toward second base trying to get a double play here and Mason Sykes the first baseman will have to keep A.J. Roush honest over there at first base. Yeah Roush has done a pretty good job getting on base so far today two times he doesn't have a single hit but he's been on base both times. As Sinski's Oh, oh, delivery will be a little outside for a ball. And Casper Bauer will look to capitalize here. There's a reason why he's leading the Bobcats in average and hitting the three hole. Sometimes it's said that you hit your best hitter three. I believe that personally. And I think that's what the Bobcats and Coach Craig Moore have done so far this season. So he's hit three hole a lot so, so far for the Bobcats as that pitch will run high for a ball. 2-0 now the count to Casper Bauer, the third baseman. 
And you could see how well Casper Bowers seen the ball so far this season. In his first at bat, one of the first, I think it was the first pitch, maybe the second, he just drove it right into right field. One of the more beautiful hits you'll see. And also for the Bobcats, he is tied for third on the team with doubles, has six on the season as that pitch went right down the heart of the plate for a strike there from Sinski as he needed to calm down his control a little bit and get one across the plate. Count now 2-1 to the Bobcat third baseman. As Sinski will keep A.J. Roush honest over there at first base. Almost an errant throw, but a good stop over there from Mason Sykes playing first base here this afternoon. That was a bit of a sidearm delivery on that turn and throw to first. Maybe why it was a little bit errant, but that was a lower slot angle for his arm. Doesn't do that when he pitches. As the 2-1 delivery there from Sinski will run high for a ball. and Sometimes you see that at the pitcher's. Sometimes they might slow it down or throw a little lob over there to first base, or they might do the little sidearm delivery because it's quicker, I guess. And personally, I'm not a big person on the sidearm because sometimes I don't know where the ball is going to go if I throw it over there into first base. Don't want to make an errant throw. I can tell you as a first baseman, I was first baseman. It's, it's not fun taking those errant oh, throws yeah, no. over there. Oh, no. I mean, that's shout out to all the first basemen in the world that <laughs> are basically brick walls over there and keep the balls in front. Some errant throws there as that 3-1 pitch was fouled back there from Kasperbauer, and the count now runs full. Kasperbauer will look to continue. Is that bat here? Is that pitch will be outside for a ball, and he'll take another. 390 feet down to first base. And the Bobcats now have two base runners to start the bottom of the third. Now Toledo will have a bit of a mound visit here as their pitching coach, John Sheehan. A William and Mary alum will come out and talk to his pitcher, Sinski. And this Kent State team is head coached by Rob Rinsettle. He's in his third season. He is in Okaloosa Walton Community College Baseball player, played there from 95 to 97, as well as an Ohio Dominican alum in 99. Ohio Dominican located in central Ohio in Columbus, moved on the east side of Columbus. So he's been in the Ohio area before and ended up working his way up to Toledo, and now he's their head coach in his third season of work. Had to send his coach out there to calm down his pitcher because after two straight walks, it's a, it's a tough inning, and he's giving anybody free bases, but with with no outs, giving up two base runners, especially with a guy like Mason Minzy coming up, you're giving yourself a tough inning. Yeah, that's not something you usually see out of this Toledo pitching staff. As an earned run average, they're ranked second behind the MAC leading Central Michigan Chippewas. As a great pitch there, it looked like Sinski took something off of that one as he'll go back to that in the first at bat. He attacked Minzy with those changeups, and it looked like he threw one right there to the Ohio backstop. Yeah, we've seen that against lefties. He's liked the low outside slow stuff, and it's worked for the, a lot up to this point. As he'll try to work the outer half of the plate once again to Minzy, but that one will be in there for a ball. So far in the afternoon, Mason Minzy 0 for 1 on the day. As he'll stare down the pitcher, Sinski. Runners on first and second here for the Bobcats, looking to strike again as that pitch... Timinzi will be fouled back and out of play. And now the count will be in favor of the pitcher, Sinski. Sinski looking to battle back here after two walks to start the bottom of the third. So far in this game, both teams have two hits. Toledo has an error, that error being on the pitcher, Sinski. As that error led to a run for the Bobcats, as Minzi will get all of that ball, and it'll be hit toward the right field corner and it'll be fielded there from Cervello and he'll throw into second base and getting in there sliding will be Mason Minzy and the Bobcats will play to run there as it'll be an RBI double from Mason Minzy as in standing up for the Bobcats will be A.J. Roush and the ever dangerous Spencer Harbert now come up to the plate and the Bobcats now lead this one to zip that's what the Bobcats like to see out of their senior and one of the leaders on this team, Mason Minzy. You get a situation like this, and he takes full advantage of it. And Minzy's swinging a hot bat so far this series as that is his seventh 
base hit so far of this series. And for doubles so far, now he has a double in every single game of this series. And maybe that's why he's the four hole for the Bobcats, the switch hitting catcher. That was the first pitch there to the Ohio left fielder, Spencer Harbertson there for a strike, swinging strike of that. And on that double there from Menzi, advancing to third base was Casper Bauer. As now they'll have runners on second and third here. The ever-dangerous Harbert as he'll flare that one out on shortstop but fielded well there, a jumping catch by the shortstop there for Central Michigan, Jaron Williams. So he just tracked that one in right into his glove and the Bobcats will hopefully not strand runners on second and third once again with no outs. And this half inning, as in the bottom of the second, they had the similar situation where they had runners on second and third and couldn't play to run with no outs. But Will Sturrock will now step into the box. Looked like that ball might have gotten off the end of the bat on that last swing because it died in the air about halfway to short. As the first pitch there to Sturrock will, into the dirt, will be into the dirt. And kept in front there from Trey Wright. Trey Wright, like you talked about, Zach so far in this season, he missed the entire 2021 season due to an injury. He's looking to bounce back this year. Sturrock will foul that one back and out of play. Counting out ones. And something about Sinski. Talked about him. He's a Tulane transfer. He compiled a 3.60 ERA in five innings pitched across eight appearances in 2021 for the Green Wave down there in Louisiana. And it says 1-1. One, one Delivery there to Sturrock will run high for a ball. Bobcats have plated one here in the bottom of the third, thanks to an RBI double. From the Texas Tech transfer, Mason Minzy, catching once again on the day. So that pitch will be low and in for a ball. And Sinski has once again worked himself into a bit of a hole as now Kent State Looks to be a little bit of movement out there in the bullpen down the right field line. It looks to be a righty in his arm loose out there. Not exactly throwing, but his arm is loose. Yeah, warming up down there. As that pitch will be rocketed right up the middle for a base hit. Find some green. Casparow will come in to score, and Minzy will round third and work his way in, standing up for a two-RBI single from Will Sturrock and the Bobcats have busted this one open even more for Zip. Now the score after the RBI single from Sturrock, the designated hitter. As I was going to mention before, Zinski, he, um, the most pit innings he's thrown in single game is six, and behind that is five, and behind that would be three. He's not going into this far into the game a lot, and so they got to warm somebody up in the bullpen because he's also struggling today. That is true as Zinski... His delivery there to Michael Richardson will run high for a ball. Richardson had a laser of a double back in the bottom of the second down the left field line. Just a frozen rope at that. 1-0 pitch will be skied out to right field. Camping under it will be Cervello. And he'll find his glove for out number two here. For the Bobcats have been more successful with runners on second and third this half inning. As in the bottom of the second, like we said, they had runners on second and third with no outs and couldn't play a single run. But this inning, they played it three thanks to an RBI double from Mason Menzi and a two RBI single from Sturrock, who's standing over there on first base. Yeah, it seems they've been able to take advantage of all the good positions they put themselves in this inning. As now the third baseman, Nick Dolan, will work himself into the box, and the first pitch will be in there for a strike to Dolan. Dolan in his first plate appearance and struck out. He'll look to prove his average here. As so far on the season for hitters that have just appeared to the plate, he has the lowest average. So the Bobcats worked into this one, 170, as he'll try to work it a little higher here this afternoon. So he took that pitch there for a strike once again, worked himself into a full 0-2 now. Two down here as Sinski will try to Get out of this inning, only giving up three runs, and that pitch will be in there for a strike looking to the Bobcat third baseman as we've got a little bit, no, no confrontation here, and 
That'll be the end of this half inning. The Bobcats do plate three thanks to an RBI double from Mason Minzy and a two RBI single from Will Sturrick. We'll take you to the fourth. You're listening to Ohio Baseball. Jumpstart your day at the Fairfield Inn and Suites in Athens. Enjoy complimentary hot breakfast, then unwind on our beautiful outdoor patio, which includes a gas fire pit and barbecue grill. Conveniently located on East State Street, just a short drive from the Ohio University campus and uptown Athens, the Fairfield Inn and Suites is situated near many shopping and dining venues. At the Fairfield Inn and Suites, you're our number one priority. Call 740-589-5839 to book your next visit to Athens or find us online at fairfieldinn.com. Hi, this is Jared Dean with Dean Heating and Cooling. As your local Tempstar dealer, you can experience superior home comfort with Tempstar game-changing technology. Whether you need a fall tune-up or a midwinter repair call, our expert technicians will make sure your heating system is running at peak performance. Count on Dean Heating and Cooling and Tempstar to keep you cozy all winter long. Find us online at deanheatingandcooling.com and go Cats! We're in the fourth inning now here at Bob Wren Stadium on the campus of Ohio University here in Athens, Ohio. As the fourth inning is sponsored by GoMart. GoMart, go for good times, go for GoMart. Now the Bobcats. Brendan Roeder still up there on the mound as that pitch will be skied out to the outfield and it will be called by multiple fielders, but it'll find the glove of Spencer Harbert is. Looked like it might drop there for a second, but Harvard cut it off there, and the Bobcats will start this half inning with an out, thanks to a skied fly out there from John Cervello, the right fielder. Sounded like good communication out there in shell left field as Hendigas was going to catch that ball, peeled off at maybe just the last second when he heard the left fielder, Spencer Harbert, calling him off. As Roeder once again working a low pitch count so far in this game, as now he'll face... The four hole, Garrett Pike, the designated hitter in this game, is his first pitch there will be in for a strike looking to Pike. Pike so far in the series. As that pitch will once again be in there for a strike from Roeder, but Pike so far in the series has a total of five hits, went two for five with two RBIs. In the last game, in the first game of this doubleheader, it's Roeder's 0-2 delivery. Will be swung on right through and missed from Garrett Pike, and he'll throw him a chair and sit him down there. As Garrett Roeder works two quick and easy outs to start the fourth. As now working himself up to the plate will be the first baseman, Mason Sykes, who so far this afternoon 0 for 1 on the day. Roeder's made quick work of this inning so far. After just a one uh, pitch out for the first out, he got three pitch out for the second one. And you've been talking about it throughout this entire game that he's keeping his pitch count low. Yeah, I mean, that's what you want to see if you're head coach Craig Moore. I mean, when you keep your pitch count low, that allows you to work deeper into ball games. That allows you to save arms, save guys in the pen. I mean, the Bobcats have used a decent number of relieving pitchers so far this series, and they'll need to keep that number low, especially into a busy week as – They'll travel to Marshall down to Huntington on Tuesday to take on the Thundering Herd, and then they'll have a four-game set next weekend up against the Eastern Michigan Eagles. And, and it hurts a little bit more oh when yeah. you're on the second game of a doubleheader. Oh and yeah. the doubleheader was supposed to be yesterday. It was supposed to be uh, two games on Saturday. But now this game, the second half of the doubleheader is on Sunday, so the last game of the series is coming after, just right after the third game, so it might tire the bullpen out a little bit more than it would have originally. As the 0-2, or correction, 1-2 delivery there from Roeder will be fouled down the third baseline by Mason Sykes. Sykes, a big guy. Standing 6 feet 4 inches tall, junior out of Chicago, Illinois. In 2021, he was tied for second on the team with seven home runs. 30, he had 34 RBIs, nine doubles as he launches and skies that one way high to center field, but it'll find the glove of Isaiah Peterson, and that'll be a quick 1-2 one, inning, 1-2-3 one, inning there for Brendan Roeder as we'll travel to the bottom of the fourth, 4-0 four in favor of the Bobcats. Oh. 
If you're traveling to a game, a weekend road trip, or just around town, you need to stop at GoMart. You'll find a GoMart open 24 hours a day right off the interstate or right off Main Street in your local community. You can refuel your ride with quality gasoline and also yourself with popular snacks, drinks, and more. We're making it easy to keep up with your busy schedule by keeping you on the go. GoMart is the proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat Football. Go for good times. Together is a wonderful place to be. That's why CareSource is devoted to keeping you and your family healthy and happy. We promise you not only reliable health care, but also a helping hand with whatever your family needs to succeed. It's why more moms in Ohio choose CareSource for Medicaid than all other plans combined. Things only get better when we work together. And together, there's nothing we can't do. We are one. Learn more at CareSource.com. In the bottom half of the fourth here, Bob Wren, your Ohio Bobcats lead the Toledo Rockets 4 0 so far in three and a half innings. And the Bobcat offense has just kind of struck as far in this game. They've had some decent troubles. I don't want to say troubles, but I mean, in the first game, they only won that one 6 5 thanks to, a, thanks to a walk off from Mason Minzie. They played at 11 in game two, and in game three of this series, they played at five. They've already got four so far here and only three plate appearances as 9-1-2 will be due up here in this half inning for the Bobcats as the shortstop Xavier Hennigas come to the plate. 0 for 1 on the day with a strikeout. Still up there on the mound. It's Cameron Sinski. He's in his fourth inning of work as that pitch will be in there for a strike. Yeah, we saw it a little bit last inning. There is, There was just an inkling of uh, bullpen work last time. They're full on working now as uh, Sinski's up in the 60s, near 70 pitches. Yeah, I mean, compared to Rotor, Sinski's numbers and pitch count have been a little little higher so far this afternoon. But it seems to be changing here as he's got Hendegas down 0-2, but Hendegas will loft that one out to left field, but it will find the glove of the left fielder Konchak, and that'll be out number one for the Rockets here. Now the order will turn to the top now, and Isaiah Peterson will come to the plate. Tough when you get a ball like that and it just heads right to someone, especially in the outfield where there's so much grass. Went right to the left fielder on that hit. Yeah, that's called getting babbit. When you put a little decent ball in play and it just happens to find the glove of a fielder. As the first pitch there to Peterson will run high for a ball. Peterson so far in the afternoon 0 for 2 with a strikeout. He'll look to get a first to base hit in this ball game here. We're just reaching base. As he'll swing the sword right there. Good solid breaking pitch from Sinski. We'll even up this count at ones to Peterson. Like you said there, Zach. They have a, um, they have, it looks to be a righty that was warming up down there in the pen. I'm not sure if they're still moving. I mean, somebody's down there, down the right field line moving for the Toledo Rockets, but doesn't seem like, seems like might be ready and warm to go. It's a count 2-1 now to Peterson. And that delivery will run high there from Sinski. And that seems to be the, the issue so far this afternoon for Sinski. He just seems to just struggle with, like, getting ahead in counts so far. I mean, he got ahead there to Hennigas, and he got an out. And usually when you get ahead, that means good things as a pitcher. Is that 3-1 pitch will run outside for a ball, and Peterson will waltz his way down to first base for a walk. Yeah, pitcher uh, Zinski's seen a lot of three-ball counts today, and when you see a lot of three-ball counts, you tend to walk guys a lot. I mean, that's just that's how it goes, I mean. When you're working it up, I mean, he's now at 75 pitches so far this afternoon for the Toledo Rockets. And that walk there to Peterson was his fourth so far in the afternoon. It's now A.J. Roush, the two-hole. Sees the ball there, low and away. 
from Sinski, and Sinski would like, would love actually, a double play ball right here. As Roush leads the team for the Bobcats and grounding in, in, grounding into double plays with three so far in the season as that pitch will work itself right down Broadway for a strike from Sinski and leaving up the count of ones. Roush having a bit of a nice easy day. He has, hasn't gotten a hit on the game, but he's scored two runs. Walk and an error has gotten him on base, and he's come around to score both times. As Sinski's delivery will be in the dirt. Good block there from Trey Wright. Been somewhat busy back there so far this afternoon. Count now in favor of A.J. Roush, the right fielder for the Bobcats. Over there at first base is Isaiah Peterson, who drew himself a walk. As that off-speed pitch will find the outer half of the plate, low and away, great pitch there from Sinski. Sinski needed that one to cross the plate. Or else he's going to see another three ball count and go down 3 and 1. And we just talked about it. He's been down in a lot of counts. He needed to get himself back in this one. As A.J. Roush, the 2 2 pitch will be lined back up the middle. But a good play there from Williams. He'll throw in a first to Sykes. But it'll get away from Sykes. And it'll hit it off the railing there and stay in play. As that one looked to go off a little bit. The end of the bat there for. A.J. Roush, little flare behind second base, but good defensive play there from Jaron Williams, and now there'll be two down for the three-hole. Colin Kasperbauer playing first base on the afternoon for the Bobcats. Kasperbauer out of Sioux City, Iowa, a senior. He's transferred from Iowa Western, and in high school he was a three-time first-team all-district Conf conference player of the year. He had 405 and 413 in his junior and senior years, respectively. So he'll foul that pitch back. And he'll look to keep the inning alive here for the Bobcats. In his first plate appearance this afternoon, he drove in a run, that being A.J. Roush back in the first. RBI single right in between the first baseman Sykes and the second baseman Fry. As the 0-1 pitch will be in there for a strike on the outer half of the plate. Solid back door to look to be a little off speed there from Sinski. Casper Bauer in his last plate appearance. About a walk. And he came around to score. As he'll swing through that one on the outer half of the plate. And he'll go down on strikes. And that'll end the fourth. Bobcats lead Toledo 4-0. We're traveling to the fifth. We've all seen the tragedies associated with drug activity and impaired driving in our state. This is Trooper Conkler of the High State Highway Patrol's Athens Post. We need everyone's help to keep drugs out of our communities, keep impaired drivers off our roads, and get people to make good decisions when driving. Traffic and community safety is the responsibility of everyone. You can do your part in calling pound 677 to report drug activity and impaired or reckless drivers to law enforcement. Together we can make Ohio a safer place to live and travel. Let O'Neill Hartman Insurance show you how Grange's strong value and fast claim service delivers league-leading coverage. O'Neill Hartman Insurance will find you a Grange auto policy that balances competitive rates and responsive Grange claim service. O'Neill Hartman Insurance considers Grange their go-to company for their combination of great value and outstanding claim service. Call O'Neill Hartman at 740-797-4685 or visit them online at O'NeillHartman.com. We're here in the fifth now. Bobcats lead the Toledo Rockets 4-0. As it's been a great outing so far up there on the bump, towing the slab for the Bobcats is Brendan Roeder. So he's just shut down this Toledo lineup who's been swinging hot bats so far this weekend. As that pitch there to the third baseman, Darren Davis, will be skied out of play, or correction, in the foul territory, and it'll be tracked down by Hendegas, makes an athletic play there. It'll find his glove for out number one. Solid play from the shortstop. 
That really was by Hendegas. That shows off his range going all the way from short to the line in left field. Yeah, I mean, that play was and what what's called no man's land out there in the shallow left field was foul. In foul territory, that was where Hendegas ended up catching that baseball for out number one. As looks like we might have another opportunity here, but that one will get out of play up there over the hill, down the left field line, out of play. Number 38, Trey Wright, the catcher on the afternoon for the Toledo Rockets. Wright is 0 for 1 so far on the day. Schroeder throwing an impressive two-hitter into his fifth inning of work here. The 0-1 delivery will be low for a ball. Yep, on those two hits, both of them were doubles, but both of them ended up getting stranded. So he's done a great job with players on base, too, even though you know, all the little times that they've been on there. Roeder, the tallest player on the pitching staff for the Bobcats, is the 1-1 delivery will be swung on and missed. Swung right through to Trey Wright. 1-2 now to count. Roeder stands at 6 feet 5 inches tall, a senior out of Sioux City, Iowa. As he'll look to sit down, Trey Wright here. As Wright will chop that one out to second base, fielded well by Richardson. He'll throw on to Casper Bauer at first, and that'll be out number two. Uh, once again, two easy and quick outs for Roeder. As Roeder is a transfer from Iowa Central, where he had a 5-0 record as a freshman with a 2.73 ERA in 33 innings. Appeared in four games with a 2-0 record and a 1.78 ERA as a sophomore. He's just been shut down so far this afternoon. And he'll start off. Caden Konchak with a strike on the outer half of the plate. Right on the black there. And this is exactly what you want from your starter when you have a bullpen that's struggling a little. If he can go as far as humanly possible, that's exactly what you're looking for. As that pitch looked like it might have take the inner half of the zone, but Konchak puts his toes on the line, and that'll be a ball. 1-1 one, one now to count to the Toledo left fielder. The pitch. Konchak will do a little chop. Not exactly a, a half swing, but just kind of moved his wrists a little. And that will be in there for a strike right down the heart of the plate. Roeder now 1-2. The delivery. A little low, says the home plate umpire for a ball. Count evened up at twos. Even when Roeder goes into a two-ball count, it seems like both of those balls were right around the strike zone. He's attacking hitters a lot today. Yeah, he's not afraid. Not afraid to throw it around the plate so far this afternoon. And the 2-2 pitch will run low and out for a ball. Count now runs to full. To Konchak, who's 0 for 1 so far in the afternoon. Roeder has yet to allow a free pass. I bet I'm going to jinx him right here as the payoff pitch will be grounded out to Richardson. He'll field that one with ease, throw on a Casper Bauer at first, and I guess I didn't jinx him as that'll be out number three, and we'll take you to the bottom of the fifth. Bobcats looking to plate more and get some more insurance as they lead 4-0 over Toledo. The past year and a half, we've all been part of unprecedented times that have been heavy. At Integrated Services for Behavioral Health, we have been here for you throughout the heaviness of the pandemic and will continue to be here for you whenever you need us. Checking in on your behavioral health and well-being is more important than ever. If you feel like you can benefit from home or community-based support, counseling, peer recovery support, and a myriad of other services we offer, please call us at 800-321-8293. We're here for you. Bobcat fans, the Hugh White Family of Dealerships is your hometown Athens dealer. And to show our commitment to the community, we're offering free car washes for Ohio University students and faculty, as well as college grad discounts with all of our new brands. But that's not all. We provide free concierge service for faculty. We'll pick up your vehicle and drop it back off after service. Take advantage of our leases at under $200 per month. Come visit us on North Columbus Road, less than five minutes from campus or online at visithughwhite.com. And remember, if the deal is right, it must be Hugh White. We're here in the home half of the fifth. And the fifth inning is brought to you by Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. 
So check them out over on State Street. As the Bobcats lead Toledo 4 0 here in this afternoon, and Toledo's made a bit of a pitching change here. As the righty, Cole Rodriguez, will come out of the pen. A sophomore out of Tom Ball, Texas. So far on the season, has an 8.44 ERA. He's appeared in five games, started in one of those, in five and a third innings pitch. Giving up six runs, five of those being earned. Seven hits, four walks, and he's fanned two batters so far on this season for the Toledo Rockets. As the Bobcats will have four, five, six to do up in this half inning. Mason Minzy has been the most efficient hitter so far in this series for the Bobcats. Will step up to the plate, the switch hitting backstop. On this afternoon, he is one for two so far. Drove in a run on an RBI double in his last plate appearance and then came around to score and to, thanks to an RBI single from Will Sturrick. Rodriguez with his bright royal blue glove will pitch to Minzy and he'll pop that one to the third baseman Darren Davis and he'll field that one can of corn with ease for out number one. And Rodriguez, one pitch, one out here to the top to start the bottom of the fifth. Not often you see somebody go straight after a new pitcher in the first pitch of the game. Normally you want to look at a pitcher too, just to see how they're coming in at you. But Mason Minzy, feeling confident, swings at the first pitch, gets a little bit under it, pops it out to third. And speaking of that pitcher, Cole Rodriguez, he's a National Park Community College transfer. This is his first pitch to Spencer Harbert. Good pitch there. A little off the plate, says he won't play umpire for a ball. More on Rodriguez. He appeared in 13 games on the mound, struck out 76 in 58 and two-thirds innings for National Park. As the 1-0 delivery to Spencer Harbert will be in there for a strike. Harbert 0 for 2 so far in the afternoon. There's a little bit of a shift here. As so he'll ground that one right into the glove of Rodriguez. So he'll basically run all the way to first base to underhand toss that to his first baseman, Mason Sykes, for out number two. And two quick outs here for Rodriguez, who came out of the pen for Toledo. Yep, good job by Rodriguez fielding his position. He got the ball in his hand, and he realized that he had plenty of time to go to first. And as you said, basically ran three, four, three quarters of the way down to first base. So now Will Sturrick step into the box. One for one in the afternoon. And so he'll swing right through that first pitch for a strike. And that one hit was a big one as it came in the bottom of the third, and it plated two runs for the Bobcats, an RBI single. As in his first plate appearance, he reached on a walk. As that pitch will be way out. Athletic catch there from the catcher, Trey Wright. As he was in a widened stance behind the dish. He had to reach all the way to his right foot to catch that one. As Sturk, the designated hitter. 1-1 one, one delivery. It's a little low for a ball. 2-1 now to count. Below the knees there to Sturrick. As Rodriguez, the high kick will be low once again for a ball. 3-1 now to count. So he worked those first two batters for quick two easy outs, and now he's threatening to walk. A little stir here, maybe on five pitches. Yeah, that's not what you wanted to see if you were Toledo. He came out strong in that first for those first two batters, and here's the walk on this one. And even with two outs, you never want to give a free base because you never know what could happen with that, especially with the – uh, Bobcats hitting as hot as they are. Yeah, and Sturrock so far this afternoon and a 1,000 on base percentage on this one. He's now walked twice. Walked on five pitches right there as the 3-1 pitch was out off the plate for a ball. Sturrock will now be over at first. And Michael Richardson will now be at the plate for the Bobcats. And he'll swing right through that first pitch for a strike. And once again, starting off with a first pitch strike is Cole Rodriguez. Richardson, one for two on the day, had a laser single back in the second. Or correction, double back in the second, my apologies. Down the left field line. And Sturk will take off, throw from right down to second base. Swiping the tag is Fry, and they will get dead in the water. Will Sturk, and that will end the fifth inning. As the Bobcats still lead this one four to nothing. We'll take you to the top of the sixth.
Located on 741 East State Street, Steak and Shake is serving up handmade milkshakes, fresh pressed steak burgers, and crispy shoestring fries cooked right to order. Kick off your day with our breakfast served until 11 a.m. And don't forget to join us for happy hour drinks and shakes on weekdays from 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. Left corner for three. Bang! And oh, baby, what a first half it's been. In sight, it must be right. We'll see you there at Steak and Shake Athens. If you can dream it, you can do it. Maybe your dream is to have a vacation cabin in the woods. Or maybe your dream is to open up a cat cafe. Uh, who ordered the milk? At Ohio University Credit Union, your dreams are our dreams, and we have the money to lend that will make them a reality. OUCU offers great loan rates, flexible terms, and fast responses on your application. Not a member? You can join. Really, stop by a branch or visit OUCU.org. Equal housing opportunity, loan subject to credit approval, fairly insured by NCUA, MLS number 433809. Top of the six now. Brendan Roeder still out there on the mound, throwing a scoreless five innings so far in this ball game. As the Bobcats lead the Toledo Rockets four nothing. Now stepping into the box will be the nine spot. Brian Fry, who had a double in his first plate appearance, out to the left center field as the first pitch there to Fry off the plate there for a ball. Brian Fry, you said the double. He, we talked about it before. He's one of two players on Toledo with a hit so far. His rotors made quick work of this lineup. And it looks like he might bloop that one in. No, it'll find the glove of Spencer Harbert there as he tracked that one down well. And that'll be out number one, and Roder will once again go another inning with another out as he's just pitched a solid afternoon so far as now he has retired nine straight batters ever since he let up that double to Fry as the Toledo Rockets will turn it over to the top of the order, and Jaron Williams will step into the plate, the shortstop, over two in the afternoon, and he'll pop that one out into shallow right field. It looks like Richardson will be the one to call for it. It'll find his glove. Two quick outs once again for Brendan Roeder, as he's just been, I mean, I'm speechless for him so far this afternoon. I mean, see, out of... Bobcat pitchers who have pitched in multiple games, he was the lowest in ERA, and he is showing why he's the lowest in ERA. As now he's retired 10 straight batters here. And we talked about him before, just being able to attack guys. He's only got two strikeouts on the game. So you see when he attacks guys, he lets up um, contact, and he trusts his fielders out there, and it's worked out for him, especially with Harbert in that catch in left, and then Richardson makes a nice catch in shallow right. As now, Scott Makowitz. Uh, the two hole in the afternoon in the box. And that 1-0 pitch there from Roeder will be a ball. 2-0 now to Makowitz. Sophomore out of Millbury, Ohio. Looking to keep his hitting streak alive. As he fans, swings right through that one, way out on his front foot there. Good pitch from Roeder. Makowitz, the only other Rocket so far this afternoon that's had a base hit besides Fry. As he gets all of that ball, and it'll be skied down the right field line. Foul. As that one was cracked out there in the right field. Good piece of hitting there, but just a tad bit early was Makowitz as he tried to get the Rockets on the board with that one. It just worked a little too far to the right. Didn't get over to the foul pole, and be foul out of play. Yeah, that was the first time we've seen somebody really hit a ball hard off of uh, off, um, today for the uh, Rockets. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like, I mean, the only really thing that I could possibly say was the Mackowitz double in the first or the Fry. I mean, those were two balls that were somewhat pieced up. Fry's ball just kind of a little bit of a loop out there in the left center field where Mackowitz's first hit this afternoon was or just a solid hit. The payoff pitch will be chopped over to third base, fielded by Dolan. He'll have trouble with it, and he'll just eat it, as I'm assuming that one will go down as an error. 
on the third baseman, Nick Dolan. It'll probably be because that ball had a little bit of some English on it. As look to go off the end of the bat there. As yes, it'll go down as an error, and Makowitz will reach on air. And that'll stop Roeder there from retiring as he but retiring batters as he retired ten straight there. Yeah, Dolan took a weird look at that ball uh, after he made that error. After the play was over, he took a check of the ball and tossed it back to the dugout. Must have been something. He came off the end of the bat. Maybe a little bit of the cover came off of it or something. Could have been. Possibly. You never know. As now John Severino, or, or correction, John Cervello, my apologies with that one, playing right field in the afternoon for the Toledo Rockets, the three-hole. Let's see if he that first pitch down the third base line. Over two on the day. Roeder working out of the stretch for the first time in a long time. As Cervello will rocket that one out to right field, but it'll get Babbitt to do he'll find the glove of A.J. Roush out there in right field, and that'll be out number three as Roeder works six scoreless innings and will travel to the bottom of the sixth. Four nothing, Bobcats still. Together is a wonderful place to be. That's why CareSource is devoted to keeping you and your family healthy and happy. We promise you not only reliable health care, but also a helping hand with whatever your family needs to succeed. It's why more moms in Ohio choose CareSource for Medicaid than all other plans combined. Things only get better when we work together. And together, there's nothing we can't do. We are one. Learn more at CareSource.com. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer hip. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now, hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagos. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Heiser Bush, Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer. IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. We're here in the home half of the six now. Six inning is brought to you by Integrated Services for Behavioral Health. Healthy people, strong communities. That's Integrated Services. As here for this half inning, the Bobcats will go 7 8 9. Here is Michael Richardson. Be up to the plate. Rodriguez on for a second inning of work. That ball chopped up the middle. Fielded by Fry. He'll throw over to first, and it will not be in time because that will be an infield single dug out by the second baseman, Michael Richardson, and he'll get his second base hit of the ball game. Now two for three on the day after a line drive double back in the second, and now an infield single here in the sixth, and the Bobcats will have a base runner in their fifth hit of the ball game as that's the first hit given up by Rodriguez so far this afternoon in his second inning of work. As soon as you saw that ball get past the pitcher, I thought Rich, you said you thought Richardson has a shot, and he hustled it all the way out, just beat it to first. It's now Nick Dolan, who had an error in the last half inning in the top of the sixth. He'll square to bunt, but it'll be in there for a strike as he'll pull back for that one. Dolan 0 for 2 in the ball game so far with two strikeouts. So look to have a productive plate appearance here for the Bobcats. They have a runner now, Richardson over there at first. Scoring the bunt now is Dolan. Once again, pitch from Richardson. He'll get that bunt down. Good bunt right there. It'll be fielded by Richardson. He'll glove toss over to first base for Sykes, but that one will go down as a sacrifice. 1-3 for the third baseman, Nick Dolan. Now the Bobcats will have a runner in scoring position out there at second base. The nine hole and shortstop Xavier Hennigas. Yeah, it looks like the Bobcats up 4 nothing right now. Just want to throw some insurance runs on top of that. Even if, it's, even if it takes sacrifice bunts and just getting one across. Yeah, as Henny gets so far in the afternoon, 0 for 2 on the day with a strikeout. And his first plate appearance. Back in the third. As that pitch was way out and way low. And a good stop back there from Trey Wright as he kept it in front of him, not allowing Richardson to advance over to third base. Richardson only has one stolen base so far on the season. He's been caught stealing twice for the Bobcats. That pitch will get away from right. He'll try to keep it in front, but it'll get too far as it'll go into the dirt. 
And advancing over to third base will be Richardson. You said it, you said it before. Um, Trey Wright's had a lot of balls in the dirt that he, he's had to block, and he's blocked a good percentage of them, including that one just bounced away, though. Yeah, um, that one will go down as a wild pitch right there. From Rodriguez. As that ball will be lofted out in the right field, and it'll find some green for a base hit from Hendegas. He'll round first into the corner. The throw there from Cervello into second base, and Hendegas will get in there sliding for an RBI double, and the Bobcats will now play another run, 5-0, thanks to that RBI double down the right field line from the shortstop Hendegas. Good piece of hitting. Absolutely. Looked like he didn't get all as much of that one as he would have wanted to, but he flared it into the perfect spot. Yeah, just... Put it right down the line as the right fielder Cervello was more shaded toward the right center field gap rather than toward the line, rightfully so, facing a right-handed hitter. But Indigus will get another base hit so far in the season, and he'll improve that average. As now the leadoff hitter, Isaiah Peterson, will come to the plate. And another pitch in the dirt from Rodriguez. He seems to be maybe struggling with that control a little bit here as we move deeper into his appearance in the second inning of work here. The Bobcats now lead five to nothing. Off of six hits. And also thanks to an error from Toledo starting pitcher Sinski. Cameron Sinski as he overthrew. Mason Sykes over there at first base in the bottom of the first. Allowed AJ Roush to get on base. Advanced to second on the throw and eventually came around to score thanks to a Colin Casper Bauer single back in the first. The Bobcats played at three. In the bottom of the third, as Peterson swings right through that one, and now they played at one here in the bottom of the sixth, and that's how they've got their five. Peterson now into a hole, one, two. One down here in the sixth. Peterson still looking for his first hit this afternoon, 0 for 2 in the day, and a walk and a strikeout. He'll take his time in the box. And if you notice that, Little gold spot there on the back of the helmet of Peterson. It's turn at gold day here at Bob Wren. As that ball's fouled back from Isaiah Peterson, turn at gold is for childhood cancer, trying to prevent childhood cancer. As Ohio Bobcats and many of their sporting and athletic t teams are involved with the turn at gold campaign. I know they were set up here as I walked into the ballpark today and definitely got a support that cause definitely don't want to see that and what a good cause that is absolutely it's nice to see that gold ribbon on the back of everybody's helmets that you've mentioned and peterson got that one lofted out in the right field going back to the track and fielding that one is cervello so throw it in as hendigas will advance the third base there as peterson put that to one of the deepest part of the ballparks or deepest part of this ballpark Cervello in right field looks like he might have been a little shaken up by that catch. Maybe ran into the wall. He stayed scratched or crouched down for a little bit until right now where he took his glove off and got off to walk to back to his position in right field. That was a good play by Cervello, though. I mean, he had to make a decent run to the track, and I think it might have been maybe because the wall's a little jutted out there in that right center field where Cervello made that catch. But Unless Hennigas will advance and A.J. Roush will come to the plate. And a breaking ball there from Rodriguez will find the strike zone low and away. Two down now. The bottom of the sixth as A.J. Roush will try to plate another here. So Rodriguez is, there was another breaking pitch. That one more down the heart of the plate. And Roush swings right through that one. Now down 0-2. A.J. Roush 0 for 2 on the day. Reached on an air back in the first. Also reached on a walk. Two runs on the day. That pitch ran a little inside. Almost got A.J. Roush. Yep, he's done a very good job getting on base. And with a guy like Casper Bauer behind him, it's, it's pretty easy to get in. Oh, yeah. Casper Bauer so far is working on a great day. Dangerous there in that on-deck circle for Ohio. A little bit of a shift here for A.J. Roush as he'll... In on the hands, and Williams will throw across the diamond, and it will be in time. What a stretch there. Doing almost a full split did Mason Sykes over there, and that's normal C for first baseman, but he'll save another run. But the Bobcats do play one thanks to an RBI double from Xavier Hendigas as now they lead Toledo 5-0, and we'll take it to the seventh.
The past year and a half, we've all been part of unprecedented times that have been heavy. At Integrated Services for Behavioral Health, we have been here for you throughout the heaviness of the pandemic and will continue to be here for you whenever you need us. Checking in on your behavioral health and well-being is more important than ever. If you feel like you can benefit from home or community-based support, counseling, peer recovery support, and a myriad of other services we offer, please call us at 800-321-8293. We're here for you. Bobcat fans, the Hugh White Family of Dealerships is your hometown Athens dealer. And to show our commitment to the community, we're offering free car washes for Ohio University students and faculty, as well as college grad discounts with all of our new brands. But that's not all. We provide free concierge service for faculty. We'll pick up your vehicle and drop it back off after service. Take advantage of our leases in under $200 per month. Come visit us on North Columbus Road, less than five minutes from campus, or online at visithughwhite.com. And remember, if the deal is right, it must be Hugh White. We're now here in the seventh. Bobcats played in one in the last half inning. He's doing RBI double to Xavier Hennigas. If you're just now joining us, they lead 5 0 over the Toledo Rockets. Bobcats have six hits on the day, and now in his seventh inning of work, Brendan Roeder. And lights out up there on the bump as that pitch is skied out in the left center field and tracking it down will be Spencer Harbert. What a catch out there. Great run, great track did Harbert, and he'll retire the first batter of this half inning as Garrett Pike will continue an 0 for day in the four spot. Reminiscent of the last inning that Roeder pitched where he got somebody to pop out to left field, made a great play by Harbert on one of the first two pitches, and it's been, as we've said, Big part of his day is getting people to get out on the first pitch, especially the first hitter of innings, it seems. It's oh, been yeah. very common on the first pitcher of innings. Of innings. Yeah, it seems like he gets the first two outs really quickly, kind of struggles with that third out, but still gets it done. As he retired 10 batters there in a row at one point in this ball game. He's still sub-70 pitches, so he still might have a little bit left to go in the tank this game, even though he's going into his uh, – Seventh inning of work. Yeah, that was pitch number 69 right there for Roeder this afternoon for a ball to the five hole. Mason Sykes, and that one will find the inner half of the zone right on the black for a strike there. Sykes 0 for in the afternoon, as most Toledo hitters have been so far. That pitch from Roeder will be inside for a strike once again, and Sykes kicks himself as that one was basically in the same spot as the 1-1 delivery from Brendan Roeder. As Roeder gets his signs from his battery mate, Mason Menzi, the 1-2 delivery, and that one will be in there for a base hit. Right up the gut, good piece of hitting there from Mason Sykes as he sent that right where it came. And that'll be the first hit for Toledo since Brian Fries double earlier in this ball game. It's been a while since it seems like Toledo's got a base hit as Sykes will get on base. Yeah, that was a, that was a great piece of heating, as you mentioned. Uh, right that right back where it came from, as you said, and stayed with it all the way. She had right up the gap. Bit of a seeing eye single right there. And it's not like the Brendan Roeder's just been shut down, absolutely striking guys out left and right so far this afternoon. He only has two, as one of those is the current guy in the box, Darren Davis, the third baseman this afternoon. But he's only had two strikeouts. I mean, he's just got guys to make weak contact right where the fielders are. And, I mean, that's just a, a great day as that one will be hit right there in front of the left fielder, Spencer Harbert, for a base hit. Now, Roeder finally into his first bit of trouble so far this afternoon in the top of the seventh as Toledo, after getting a first pitch out in the top of the seventh from or Roeder did, he's allowed two base hits in a row now. And now Trey Wright will step up to the plate 0 for 2 in the afternoon. And Toledo now has four hits thanks to two here. Quick in the top of the seventh. Yep, and you mentioned that he was allowed a lot of weak contact. Neither of these hits have been particularly hard. That one just flared into left field. The first one just pushed up the middle and uh, that's what happens is sometimes they find gaps. He's do been doing a good job still today. 
As he starts off, Trey right there with a the first pitch strike. Right over the heat of the plate. And something that might be great here for Roeder would be a ground ball. Get out of the inning with a double play. Absolutely amazing here. Keeping that pitch count down. As that might be it, that drilled the umpire. That absolutely nailed the umpire right there, but he took it like a champ. Hats off to him, man. Yeah, he really had no chance to get out of the way of that one. I mean, that was blasted right into his gut. And that's unfortunate. Oh, in all honesty, it's unfortunate for the Bobcats because that would have been a 6-4-3 tailor-made double play. But because it hit the umpire, it'll just go down as a hit. I mean, if, if it's anywhere else to the right or the left of the umpire, I mean, that hit him right square. It looked like in the, either the chest or the, or the midsection. But if that just gets right by him, playing right behind him was Xavier Hendigas. And that would have been a 6-4-3 double play. Yeah. I mean, you're just, there's nothing you can really do about that. But now the bases are loaded for Roeder. And that tough break leads to a meeting at the mound. Yeah, as the Bobcat pitching coach Tim Brown, Lindenwood alum, will work himself out onto the mound and talk to his pitcher, Brendan Roeder. And now we've got finally, finally got some movement out there in the pen down the left field line. As it looks like two righties are working for the Bobcats. As they've got deeper into this ball game, they lead Toledo now 5-0. Toledo's had two hits and then a little bit of a, not sure what it'll go down there for, for, um, for Trey Wright as he just, he hit the ball right at the middle. Hit the umpire. I'm not sure if they'll count it as a hit or just reach on, I mean, I don't know if umpire's interference is really what you'd consider it. It's not really interference. It's just where he's at. I mean, I would, if it would have got by the umpire, that's the sad thing is it would have been a 6-4-3 double play, assum assuming. Yeah, it looks like I think they gave um, Trey Wright the hit for that. I think it's uh, the umpire must have based it on uh, the contact, decided that it was hard enough contact that it was going to be a very tough play. I mean, I would have given him the hit, base. Man. Yeah, that's what they have officially scored it there as a hit uh, for, for Trey Wright as the first pitch there to... Caden Konchak it's for a ball. Yeah, I'm not quite sure if that umpire knew that um, he had a guy right behind him. Xavier Hendigas was right behind him and ready to make that play, but that ball was hit hard enough that it's one of those where as an umpire you just make the decision that, that that's probably going to get into the outfield. Tough play. That yeah. was going to be a short hop for Hendigas even oh, if yeah. he was able to pick it. Oh, yeah. As that 1-0 delivery was in there for a strike, count evened up at once. As there's a tailor-made ground ball out to Hennigan. Six, four to Richardson, to three at first base. The throw gets by Casper Bauer, and Toledo will now plate two as reaching safely will be Caden Konchak as it got by the first baseman, Colin Casper Bauer, as it was tailor-made out there for Hennigan. Threw on to Richardson. Richardson's, Richardson's throw was in the dirt. Not sure who they'll score that air on, but it will be an air nonetheless as Toledo now plates two here. Yeah, it looked like when Richardson caught that ball, he bobbled with it a little once it hit his glove. He looked down at his glove after the play and was very upset, and after that bobble, rushed the throw and buried it in the dirt. Sometimes that's how it works there out as a second baseman, trying to get that transfer out quickly and make sure you can get a double play. Here's the nine hole, Brian Fry come to the plate here now for Kent State. Still unclear who they'll score that air on. I'm assuming it will be on Richardson. It seemed like it was close for there for the pick from Casper Bauer. Is the 1-0 delivery there from Roeder. Yeah, I'm not quite sure that um, a pick is something that you expect from the first baseman. I'm not sure if they give that an error on a missed pick. It just depends on whatever the score rules it. And we'll get you updated whenever we get that official decision from the official scorekeeper here. Looks like uh, Richardson has an error, so that looks like it was going to be on it. They put it on him. And that ball must have hit something, maybe the plate, maybe the batter. I think it hit off the uh, ankle there, the front ankle of Brian Fry. As Roeder will now try and get out of this inning. As this has been the only inning he's really faced any struggles so far this afternoon. He's around allowed two runs, but only one of those will go down as being earned. As that pitch is 
Rocketed out into right field. A.J. Roush goes back, and it'll find his glove for out number three. But Toledo plates two thanks to an error from the second baseman, Michael Richardson. Score now 5-2 to two in favor of Ohio. We'll take you to the seventh inning stretch. Together is a wonderful place to be. That's why CareSource is devoted to keeping you and your family healthy and happy. We promise you not only reliable health care, but also a helping hand with whatever your family needs to succeed. It's why more moms in Ohio choose CareSource for Medicaid than all other plans combined. Things only get better when we work together. And together, there's nothing we can't do. We are one. Learn more at CareSource.com. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer hip. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Busch Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer, IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. We're here now in the bottom of the seventh after the seventh inning stretch, and this seventh inning is brought to you by Quidoba. Quidoba stands for flavor. East State Street in Athens or online at Cadoga, Cad, correction, Cadoba.com. Had some trouble with that one. As in the top half of the seventh, Toledo plated two thanks to an error from Mason, or correction, Michael Richardson out there at second base as he tried to get a 6-4-3 double play after a feed from Xavier Hennigas. Throw was in the dirt, got away from Colin Castor Bauer, and Toledo scored two off of that. Caden Konchak reached on an error. He runs scored there. As he'll be scored with a one RBI so far in the afternoon. Yep, as you mentioned, the first time really that Ohio has faced trouble on the defensive end, and they gave up two runs after the bases were loaded. And we also had a pitching change in that half inning there. As now up on the bump for Toledo is Kyle Music out of Cincinnati, Ohio, 6'5", junior. So far on the season for Music, 6'7'5", ERA, a 1-3 win-loss record. Has appeared in seven games, but six of those have been a start in 18 and two-thirds innings, allowing 14 earned runs. It's Colin Kasperauer will chop one over to first to Sykes. He'll have some trouble with it. Flips over to the pitcher, Music. And that will be an out as the first base umpire took a little while to signal whether it was an out or a or Casper Bauer had an infield single, but it'll go down as an out. That'll be a quick out there for Kyle Music. Yeah, and with Kyle Music after when well, he has as you said it, seven appearances and six of those are starts. Normally when you run the opener like uh, Toledo did today, you have the starting pitcher go in second to eat up a lot of those middle innings, two through maybe five or six so you don't have to throw a bunch of relievers, but they decide to put their um, normal starter in the seventh inning. Maybe he'll eat up the rest of the innings today. It's now Mason Minzy, the Ohio backstop into the box, the switch hitting catcher. It's the first pitch there to Minzy will be in there for a strike. So far in the afternoon, Mason Minzy, one for three, with an RBI double. He's also came across the score once in this ball game. He's had a double in every single game this series. As a breaking pitch there, looked to be a slider from Music. Sl slid right across and into the strike zone there, right down the heart of the plate for a strike. Although um, looking at Kyle Music's um, appearances, he has a couple of just one inning, not quite two inning appearances, a one inning appearance, a 1.1 inning appearance, and a 1.2 inning appearance. So he has a little bit of reliever in him, it seems, and they trust him in that role. As that pitch right there, Trey Wright, I thought it was going to be in there for a strike. It was not. Instead, scoreboard reads count 2-1. I believe the umpire signaled it's 1-2. Is taking some time up there is Mason Minzy. Yeah, 
Hands getting the signs. It's Kyle Music. Low delivery. That ball will be lined on the left field line. Foul. And we'll get into the Ohio bullpen as they still got a couple righties working down there in the pen. As the count, yes. The plate umpire did have it correct. It was 1 2. Thought I saw him signal 1 2. Menzies got two on him. That's why I thought Trey Wright got up as he thought the first ball of this plate appearance to Menzies was strike threes. That ball will be out off the plate for ball number two. 2 2 the count now. To the Texas Tech transfer, Mason Menzies. Music will come set. No deliver, and Menzi will stay alive once again, fouling that ball off the railing. Good hands over there in the Toledo dugout. Got that one. And they had about four or five guys reaching over to try and grab it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like an MLB game reaching over, like the fans reaching over the wall of the MLB <laughs> yeah, game. Trying to figure out which, who's going to have a souvenir. And Menzi, like we said, went to Texas Tech and then transferred to Wabash Valley and then ended up coming to here, Ohio University. The 2-2 delivery was a little high for the ball. Count now full. Well done by Mason Minzy working this count to full after it started. Yeah, started 0-2 and Hill, the payoff pitch will be high for a ball. Good at bat, good plate appearance there for Mason Minzy as he'll take the 90 feet walk down to first base. Now Spencer Harbert, five hole, looking for a hit so far in this ball game. And so far in this series, Harbert has had a hit in every single ball game. And one for four in game one, one for four in game two, and one for three in game three. Looking for that hit here, is 0 for three on the day. Yep, it's just him and um, Dolan who haven't reached base yet today. That is true. That is true there as every other Bobcat has reached base safely so far this afternoon, whether it be via walk or hit, as that pitch will be low and away in the dirt. It'll get by Trey Wright, and Mason Minzy will have himself a free base over there at second base. That one will probably go down as a wild pitch. As Harbert now, 1-1 to him. And something interesting here, a little bit of a shift here for Spencer Harbert. As the Toledo defense is lined up like he's a pole hitter. They have the second baseman, Brian Fry, out there playing almost straight up the gut. And even the first baseman, Mason Sykes, is off the bag and shaded to his right as Harbert puts that one on the ground and it'll find its way into left field as that'll be a base hit and Harbert will now have a hit in every single game. But this series right there as he put that one right in between the third baseman, Darren Davis, in the shortstop, Jaron Williams for a base hit in the left field. Now it'll be runners at the corners here for Will Sturick. Yep, we were just talking about the shift. Normally you think you're going to hit it on the ground. If you want to get a hit against the shift, you got to go the other way. But um, Harbert decided just to put a little mustard on that one and shoot it through the gap. A good piece of hitting there. The Bobcat left fielder is now Will Sturick. One for one on the day. Two RBIs and a walk so far. He got caught stealing once he reached in a walk. Last play appearance. So the Bobcats look to get a little bit more insurance after allowing two. Trying to match that two here in the seventh as the first pitch there to Sturrock will be fouled back. As so far the series has gone 2-1 in favor of Toledo to this point. Toledo won game two, 11-8, and won game three. First game of today's doubleheader, 11-5. Seems like if Toledo wins these games, they got to score runs, where if Ohio wins the game so far in this series, the one game that they've got is Sturrock's pitch will be fair ball down there into the corner, and that will score definitely one. Sturrock will get into second base safely, and they'll hold up over there at third base. Spencer Harbert, but Minzy will come around to score as a good piece of hitting as Sturrock fought that pitch in on the hands down the right field line into the corner for a double, and the Bobcats look to plate another one here as now they lead 6-2 to two over Toledo with Michael Richardson, who's 2-3 for three on the day. It was important for Ohio to come back out and answer after that inning from Toledo. They put up two runs after they'd been shut out for the first six. 
Ohio comes back. They have a run on the board. Guy on second and third just one out in a good spot to put another run to the plate and answer both those runs from Toledo. As all of the infielders now will be up on where the green meets the dirt-colored turf. Trying to cut down another run here is the first pitch to Michael Richardson. We in there for a strike. Two for three on the day is Richardson. The single and a double, an infield single at that. He also came around to score. As the Bobcats now lead six to two. And Richardson will send that one right back where it came and it'll get down in the green for a base hit. And that will definitely score one and it'll score two there. An RBI, two RBI single there for Michael Richardson and that one gives the Bobcats a big lead now as he extends the lead to six. The Bobcats now lead eight to two. Thanks to an RBI double from Will Sturrock who took that pitch on the hands. Drove in a run, and then Richardson, the next batter, drove in both Sturrock and Spencer Harbert. Thanks to that RBI single there from the second baseman. Yeah, it looked like it took a little bit of a weird, there's a weird spin on it. It took a little bit of a weird hop in front of Makovic in center field. Went from his left to his right on a bit of an awkward hop that tricked him a little bit. So the guy from second who held up because the ball was hit in the air was still able to score on that hit. And now... Trey Wright, the catcher, will go out and make sure his pitcher, Kyle Music, is keeping a calm head out there. As Music came on out of the pen, as now it's like Toledo might be having a pitching change here. Not exactly sure. There is, there seems to be a lefty working out there in their pen. Didn't get the signal, but he'll have a mound visit nonetheless as now the only Bobcat not reaching base either via walk or hit so far as Nick Dolan is. We're going to have a pitching change here, and that will knock Kyle Music out of the game, and we'll take a step aside here as the Bobcats lead 8-2 to two now. We're still in the bottom of the seventh as they played at three so far in this half inning. Okay, people, we all know what's at stake in this game. Zoe, what's at stake? Our futures. Our futures. And is anything going to keep us from achieving our goal? No way. Because what do we have? The plan. Ohio's 529 plan. Because in this family, how do we play the college savings game? Tax free. And where do we play it? Um, I don't know, Daddy. That's okay, Pumpkin. Want to win at college savings? Go to collegeadvantage.com slash bobcats. The road to a championship is built on years of practice and hard work. That's true in basketball and the construction industry. The apprenticeship and upgrade training programs provided by the Athens Area Union Building Trades produces the workforce with the most modern skills and cutting edge knowledge in the industry. The key to success to the Bobcats on the floor is the same as your choice on the work site. The winning move is working with members of the Athens Area Union Building Trades, proud sponsor of Ohio University Basketball. Welcome back to the bottom of the seventh. Bobcats have played at three in this half inning as they lead Toledo eight to two, and they knocked Kyle Music out of the ball game. And now on is a lefty, a sophomore out of Hallsville, Kentucky, Parker Newby, standing six free for the Toledo Rockets. Out of only Central College transfer, he was a two-time National Junior College Academic All-American, he pitched two seasons at Olney. Had a 2.87 ERA and a 3-0 record in 2020. And so far on the season, Newbies had an 18 even ERA and five appearances, this being his sixth. He's pitched five e innings even. Ten runs given up, all of those being earned. As now Nick Dolan, the only Bobcat that hasn't reached base safely so far this afternoon. We'll Step to the plate, and the first pitch there from Newby will be into the dirt for a wall. Well, 
over there at first base is Michael Richardson for the Bobcats. As in this half inning, he drove in two runs. The last batter for the Bobcats drove him in on an RBI single right up the middle. And right in front of the center fielder out there, Scott Makowitz. As the second pitch was low for a ball to Dolan. He's looked like he's been trying to square the bunt here. We'll let that one run inside. Almost hit him. Played umpire says it's in there for a strike. 2-1 now the count. Yeah, it looks like Dolan's leaning in on the plate a little bit. He's crowding it a lot, so these catch pitches that are catching the inside corner of the plate are quite close to him. Tough hits for him. As the 2-1 delivery will be fouled into the dirt. The turf, rather. Isn't exactly dirt here at Bob Wren Stadium. The infield's all turf and the outfield's grass. The only really dirt at this place is on the warning track out there in the outfield. As Parker Newby comes set here at the chest, taking off his Richardson. A little half-hearted swing did Dolan, and he will swing, but first base was occupied and reaching all the way to third base with a throw is Michael Richardson. Yeah, and Michael Richardson hit second and just did not stop. Didn't oh expect yeah, no. that on the pass ball for him. Yeah, it was a little awkward there, too, because Dolan, that will go down as a strikeout, and he wouldn't be able to reach first because first base was occupied initially by Michael Richardson. Took off there on the leg kick and got all the way to third. Now the nine hole Xavier Hendegas will have a chance to drive in another run here. He drove in a run thanks to an RBI double in his last at bat. Newbie's first pitch to Hendegas will be in the dirt for a ball. And Richardson has been a great guy on the bottom half of the order so far today for the Bobcats. Three for four on the day. Most hits so far this afternoon for the Bobcats. Two RBIs with that as well as Hennigus will foul that one. Lord Craig Moore down there in the third base coach's box. Foul. So it'll be evened up at one. Two down here. We're still in the bottom of the seventh. The Bobcats lead the Rockets eight to two. Those eight runs came off of nine hits. Toledo has five. As the 1-1 one -one delivery will run out for a ball. Looked like that was attempted at a breaking ball that he just didn't have a full grasp on because it stayed on his hand side. He was trying to move it from his left to his right. It just stayed out to left. Mm -hmm. And also this afternoon, Toledo, one air. Bobcats have two. Both teams have practically scored off of airs so far this afternoon as that pitch caught the outer half of the plate for a strike. As back in the bottom of the first, the Bobcats played at one. Thanks to his, a or correction, Colin Casperbauer RBI single. That's played at A.J. Roush, who reached on air. As any guess will ground that one. Good play there from Darren Davis. He'll throw on the first for Sykes, but it'll take Sykes off the bag. And Hendigus will reach. Not sure if that'll go down as an air. As that throw did take Sykes off the bag, but it would have been bang, bang either way. Yeah, you mentioned it before. It's it's tough to pull Sykes off that bag because he is not small. Oh, yeah, no, he's a big dude over there at first base. Your prototypical first base guy when you look at him. And that will go down as an error on the third baseman, Darren Davis. And it'll play to run now for the Bobcats. Now they have directly scored a run off of an error this afternoon. As now they lead 9-2. to two. And Isaiah Peterson will come to the plate, and he'll look to do some damage here and commit some lefty-on-lefty -lefty crime. As he's still looking his, for his first hit of the ball game. Over three on the day, reached on a walk. He's also struck out so far in this ball game. Little check swing there from Peterson. He didn't go, though. Ball will be in the dirt. Keep it up at ones. Hendigus so far now in the afternoon. He's one for four. Reached on an air there. That's why he's on first, as that pitch almost got Peterson. Ran a little inside there from Newby. But Hendegas has now driven in two RBIs, thanks to an RBI double. Back in the sixth. And that reaching on air will drive in another run. Yep, I'd do done well, very well out of the nine hole. That's what you like to see from your guy in the nine hole, especially getting on base for a big-time average guy in Isaiah Peterson at the top of the lineup. 
and especially also being a guy that hasn't seen any action this entire series in Hendigas. I mean, that's what you want to see if you're Craig Moore. As Peterson, even up at two is the pitch. Runs inside, little high as well for a ball. And it'll be even, and I'm assuming over there at first, once the pitch is known to be delivered, Hendigas will be taking off here with two down and a full count. And Newby will come set at the chest. The payoff pitch swung on by Peterson, fouled toward the first base coach's box, and he'll stay alive for another pitch. One characteristic out of Peterson, like you said, Zach, he's mainly been the guy, I believe he's, what, second? Yes, he's second on the team in average. Came into this game swinging 367 with an on-base percentage of 488, which does qual lead qualifying hitters for the Bobcats so far this season. As that pitch will be low for a ball, and that'll be another walk for Peterson, and I guess that's why he leads the team in OBP. And that's why he's the leadoff. So get on base. Yeah, yeah, Peterson, as you mentioned, the big OBP, he's the only guy on this Bobcat roster with an OPS on base plus slugging of over a thousand. And when you're you have an OPS over a thousand, that's that's nuts right there. I mean, that's not something you see really ever every day. I mean you're a good solid hitter if you've got an OPS. That's uh, above 1,000, like you said, for those that don't really know the OPS stats, on-base percentage plus slugging percentage, which basically tallies the value of a hitter and how well they can get on base and hit for power. As A.J. Roush now fouls the first pitch toward Craig Moore in the third base coach's box. Foul. 0-1, now the count to the right fielder, who's also looking for his first hit on the ball game. 0 for 3 on the day with a walk, and he also reached on an error back in the first. Came around to score twice so far in this ball game. And he was that lone run that scored in the first and gave the Bobcats the early lead in this ball game. Started off what seems to be an offensive surge in game four of this four game series between the Bobcats, for the Bobcats, between the Bobcats and the Rockets. As that pitch was in there for a strike, now into a hole is A.J. Roush. Playing right field once again. Roush was the MAC Player of the Week back the week of March 14th. Uh, that series against Kent State he had here at Bob Wren was nothing short of incredible. Yep, and picking somebody from either of those teams to be the MAC Player of the oh, Week was yeah. difficult yeah. as everybody was putting bad on ball. So A.J. Roush being the one that they took out of that means a lot what he did about that weekend. Yeah, A.J. Roush and Kent State shortstop McNamara just – had <laughs> great weekends that weekend. I was on the call for all four of those games, and the offensive slugfest that was that series was something exciting to watch. Not that this series hasn't been great either. I mean, the Bobcats are looking to be splitting this series as they'll try to tie it up at twos here. And it looks like it'll go their way as long as they don't have an absolute implosion in the eighth and the, an eighth and the ninth. As they lead this one 9-2 to two over Toledo. A.J. Roush has now worked the count to 1-2. One to two, one two. two down here in the bottom of the seventh. As Parker Newby will try to get out of this inning. The delivery will be swung on by Roush, and he'll poke that one in the left field on the ground for a base hit. It'll be bobbled out there in left field, and coming around to score will be Hendegas trying to get a back pick there and trying to get an out there to Peterson. Was unsuccessful, the left fielder, Hayden Konchak, but... And it'll go down as a hit and an RBI single for A.J. Roush, who now has his first hit in the ball game. And now the only two Bobcats to not have a hit are Nick Dolan and Isaiah Peterson. So yeah, a total of 10 hits and 10 runs now. Saw that um, in that uh, last at-bat, we saw that walk that was issued with two outs. Normally you don't like expect those to be too much, but... As you know, if you watch a lot of baseball, those normally do come around to score, even if there's just two outs. You never want to give a guy a free pass and put a guy on second, one hit, scored him, especially at the top of this lineup with a guy like A.J. Roush. The saying is, walks will haunt, and that they have. Now the first baseman on the afternoon, Colin Kasperbauer. It's into the box, 1-0 the count, as that first pitch was a little high, an end for a ball. Not only does that score a run, but... 
even though Casper Bauer's only hitting one for three on the day, you're scared of him every time he walks into that plate with an average. He had that up near 400 at one point in time this season. It was actually above 400 as he rockets that one out to center field, but it'll fly in the glove of Scott Makowitz for out number three, but the Bobcats plate five in the bottom of the seventh and now lead 10-2 to two over, the t over Toledo. We're going to the top of the eighth. You expect world-class primary care from Memorial Health System. It's time to expect more, much more. Our patients now also get free virtual urgent care. So expect our expertise everywhere and answers anytime for free. No one else offers this because we're reinventing primary care. So find out more and expect more today from Memorial Health System. Let's go Cats. Let's go Labatt Blue Light. When you drink a pristine Canadian Pilsner, you're good at beer. Bobcats fans, grab a Labatt Blue Light and be good at beer. Always enjoy responsibly. Copyright 2021 Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. All rights reserved. Labatt, registered U.S. trademark of Labatt Brewing Company, LTD. Top of the eighth now here in Athens, Ohio, on the banks of the Hawking River. As this is game four of a four-game series. A little Mac action between the Ohio Bobcats and the Toledo Rockets. Bobcats took game one. Toledo took games two and three. And the Bobcats have made a pitching change now as Chase Harris, a fifth-year senior out of New Marshfield, Ohio, will come out of the pen. And we'll try to give the Bobcats a little bit of a hold right here is he did come in and get some work in game one as that pitch will be up high all working back but it will be in play and it'll find the glove of Mason Minzy for out number one popped out and back to the catcher there as Harris gets a quick out there and a pop out the end of the day for a uh, rotor that's Seven innings pitched, he had 83 pitches. I gave up only one earned run with two strikeouts, and all 10 of these runs that the Bobcats have scored will be there for him for his to go towards a win if the Bobcats are able to keep this game and pull it out. Yeah, as Jaron Williams was the one who popped it foul, popped up to the catchers. Now we've got a pinch hitter here, Zach Schwarzenberger, now at the plate here, out of Saline, Michigan. As the second pitch will be right down Broadway for a strike as he looks right that, that one right into the mitt. And like you said about Rotor, just a great day up there on the bump. Great solid outing there, and that's what you want to see from Craig Moore, and I guess that's the reason why Rotor is leading the Bobcats in the ERA category so far this season. So that ball is fouled down the first baseline. Now to play from Schwarzenberger. Schwarzenberger a senior. Uh, Saline, Michigan. He started, got the start, and the first game of today's doubleheader went one for four with an RBI and a strikeout. As the pitch from Harris runs a little wide for a ball. So far, we'll give you some stats right here. I'll start with Schwarzenberger hitting 182 on the season. He's played in now 18 games, started in 11 of those. Eight hits so far in the season, two of those being extra base hits. As the pitch there from Harris will not find the outer half of the zone. A little off the plate for a ball. Even up at twos now. Harris so far this season, 7.63 ERA. 2-0 win-loss record and six appearances and 15 and a third innings pitch, giving up 14 runs, 13 of those being earned, and he'll fan that batter right there. Swung right through to Schwarzenberger, and he'll take a seat, strike three, and that'll be the first strikeout this afternoon for Chase Harris. You like to see the uh, good, quick pitching 
rubbing off for the Bobcats, going from Roeder to Harris. Harris gets quick work of two as soon as he comes up, too, even in his first inning of the game. And as mentioned, Chase Harris did appear out of the bullpen in game one of this four-game series for the Bobcats. Pitched two and a third innings. Gave up two earned runs. As that pitch from Cervello will be grounded over to Dolan. He'll field it easily, throw in a Casper Bauer first, and that'll be three quick outs in the top of the eighth. For Chase Harris, we'll take it to the bottom of the eighth. Bobcats still lead 10 to 2. Plan your next visit to stand up and cheer for your Ohio Bobcats in Athens County, Ohio. Visit AthensOhio.com, the best resource for where to eat, where to stay, where to shop, and where to play. Athens County is home to countless trails and outdoor activities. Enjoy mountain biking, kayaking, rock climbing, and hiking. Find your own adventure. Cruise the Hawk Hawking Adena Bikeway. Mountain bike the Bailey's Trail System. Hike trails less traveled at Stroud's Run State Park. Or ride nine thrilling motorcycle routes on Ohio's Windy Nine. We can't wait to see you in Athens County, Ohio. The road to a championship is built on years of practice and hard work. That's true in basketball and the construction industry. The apprenticeship and upgrade training programs provided by the Athens Area Union Building Trades produces the workforce with the most modern skills and cutting edge knowledge in the industry. The key to success to the Bobcats on the floor is the same as your choice on the work site. The winning move is working with members of the Athens Area Union Building Trades, proud sponsor of Ohio University Basketball. We're in the home half of the eighth, and the eighth inning is brought to you by Hugh White. If the deal is right, it must be Hugh White. As the Bobcats will go over a little bit of a summary to this point, lead 10-2 over Toledo. Ten hits on the ball game compared to Toledo's five. Both teams have two errors apiece so far, and it's just been all Bobcats so far this afternoon. Started off the game at the bottom of the first with an RBI single from Casper Bauer. Brought, a bunch, or brought in... Three runs, put up a crooked number in the bottom of the third, brought in one in the sixth, and put up a crooked five spot in the bottom of the seventh to extend that lead from 10 to 2. And now out of the pen and on the pitch here for Toledo as they'll make a pitching substitution here as Patrick Dillon, the redshirt freshman, standing six feet, three inches tall, out of Finley, Ohio, will come out of the, the bullpen, righty, pitching here. For Toledo so far in the season, 4.15 ERA, 0-1 win-loss record, seven appearances, all of those being out of the bullpen. Eight and two-thirds innings pitched, giving up four runs, all four of those being earned. And he also made an appearance in game one as the hit there from Mason Menzi will be grounded out to Fry at the second base, and that'll be out number one, one pitch, one out there for Dillon. And I'll continue to talk about Dillon. Dillon in that game one. Did make an appearance. He did not record an out, but gave up one hit and one walk in that game. And he now has a recorded, recorded out in this game. As his first pitch was an out, as Harbert, a little bit of a shift on here, will now step in the box. And the first pitch is in there for a strike. Minzy did the same thing that he did uh, last time he saw a new pitcher. Pitcher comes out for the first time, and he chases the first pitch and gets out on it. He's a very talented, very confident hitter, but a lot of the times you expect people to take a pitch or two, especially when it's a new pitcher. As Herbert fouls out one down the third baseline, no two now the count. Herbert working on a one for four day. It's a run on the day. And he's in an 0-2 hole, the pitch. Dillon's pitch is lofted out in the right field, coming in on his Cervello, and he will not be able to get it. That ball took a little bit of a weird bounce out there in right field. And that'll go down as a bloop single there for Spencer Harbert. Well done by Harbert. Seeing the ball where it's at, just reaches the bat out and pokes that one at a shallow right field, gets on first. Solid piece of hitting right there, 0-2. Defensive swing, base hit nonetheless. Bobcats now have 11 of those so far on this afternoon. As Will Sturrock will now come to the plate. A little bit of information here on Patrick Dillon. His father, Mike, played football at Purdue while his mother, Lynn, was on the swim team at St. Michael's College. And his brother, Cameron, played football at Columbia. It's a very athletic family there for Dillon. As, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so sure. that runs in the blood, I'm assuming, yeah. in that family. Oh, yeah. is the first pitch there in all, every single sport, too. I mean, dad football, brother football. Mom was a swimmer, and now he's a baseball player. 
as his first pitch there to Sturrock. A ball. Sturrock will ground that one over the third base. Dar Darren Davis will make a dive, but he will not have any play anywhere. And that will probably go down as an, yes, it will go down as an infield single. I don't know why I said probably. Yeah, that's a definitely an infield single there for Will Sturrock, who is still perfect on the day. Now three for three with three RBIs and two walks. Sturrock's kind of been that guy so far this afternoon for the Bobcats. Mm -hmm. And we saw um, last time, or two times ago, Sturrock got on and he got thrown out at second. He doesn't have that much speed. I'm wondering if uh, the dive from Darren Davis cut off um, – Jaron Williams, who was playing short, Williams had that lined up. It was a um, sh slow hopper down to shortstop, so I'm not sure if he would have made that throw, but he definitely would have had a better chance than Davis. As that ball from Richardson goes off the handle, and he'll throw on the first. Almost had a double play there, but no, as it'll go down as a fielder's choice as Richardson will reach there on the fielder's choice and throwing out a second base there with Sturrock. As fielded well over there from Mason Sykes and the throw back to the pitcher. Dillon not be in time. It'll be a hit it, correction. It'll be a fielder's choice as Richardson will reach there. There's now runners on the corners now with two down here for Nick Dolan, who is the only Bobcat who has not reached base safely so far this afternoon. As he's got a hat trick, a strikeout, so for three on the day with three strikeouts so far. As the pitch there from Dillon will be right on the outer half of the plate for a strike. And they did not rule. Richardson there. I was wondering if they were going to say it was an error if he reached, but I think he would have made it in time. So they just say it would have just gone down as a fielder's choice reaching there. The pitch from Dillon in the dirt. Good block there from Trey Wright, who's just been a great bat stop. Hats off to him this afternoon for Toledo. Absolutely. He's been down in the dirt, but actually turf a lot of times today. Yeah, I mean, he's just been – they call they call the catcher the backstop for a reason, and that's been true from Trey Wright. As an now 1-0 count to the third baseman, Dolan. Runs a little high and out for a ball. And now Dolan finally has a hitter's count this afternoon. We'll see if he can be that said hitter. As yeah, coming set at the belt is Dylan, the pitch. Low in the dirt once again. And count 3-1 now to Dolan. And if he does... And do so walk right here. That would mean every single Bobcat so far this afternoon that has stepped to the plate has reached base safely. And with um, Dolan's struggles, you would think that he would want to attack him a lot more than he is right now. There he throws a strike that's get fouled, that gets fouled off behind him. But you don't want to go down three balls to a guy who's struggling as bad as Dolan is today. That is definitely true. As now Dolan's in danger of striking out four times in the afternoon. As I'm assuming on the pitch, Richardson will be taking off here. Here's the full count, two out pitch, payoff pitch. It'll be high, and Dolan will reach base, and that means every Bobcat has now reached base safely one way or another this afternoon, which is crazy to think about so far in this game. Very impressive, especially against the uh, pitching team that Toledo is. Toledo's shown all season that they've got a lot of prowess out of that um, bullpen, and their starters are very good too. So being able to get everybody on base safely and putting up a 10 spot in this game is very impressive for the Bobcats. Yeah, I mean, in total so far this afternoon, Toledo has walked four batters. Where if you look at the other side, Bobcats have zero so far this afternoon as they have not allowed a free runner to reach yet. As the first pitch there to the shortstop, Xavier Hennigas is in the dirt and away for a ball. That's a very common thing for Ohio. They're currently, they have currently have the least amount of walks issued in the entire MAC at 82, so they rarely ever walk people, and that's good to see. If you're a Bobcat fan. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, when you're throwing now, granted, sometimes that may put you into situations where some of the Bobcats pitching is pitching to induce weak contact, and pitching to contact may lead to some issues which might, you know, put up the 
you know, numbers, the little bit of a, you know, shady so-so numbers for the Bobcats and their ERA and such for their pitching staff. But still, I mean, when you're not allowing free passes, that's good. That's solid. That's what you want to see. As Hennigas fouls that one out of play down the right field line. Count now, 1-2. To the Bobcat shortstop base is juiced now. And if the dagger isn't already in, up eight in the um, last inning of this game, bases are loaded. If um, Hendages is able to get on base here, get a hit, drive a couple of guys in, that would be really tough for Toledo. And then it'd send the top of the lineup and Isaiah Peterson back up. But uh, that one will be swung right through from Hennigas, and that'll be a strikeout there for Dillon, and that'll be three outs. For Toledo, as now we'll take it to the top of the ninth, where the Bobcats have a chance to shut down and end this ball game, leading 10 to 2 over Toledo. Bobcat fans, the Hugh White Family of Dealerships is your hometown Athens dealer. And to show our commitment to the community, we're offering free car washes for Ohio University students and faculty, as well as college grad discounts with all of our new brands. But that's not all. We provide free concierge service for faculty. We'll pick up your vehicle and drop it back off after service. Take advantage of our leases at under $200 per month. Come visit us on North Columbus Road, less than five minutes from campus or online at visithughwhite.com. And remember, if the deal is right, it must be Hugh White. Whether you're coming to Athens to root on the Bobcats, visiting friends and family, or just in town for business, the Hampton Inn in Athens wants to be your home away from home. With 86 sparkling rooms, complimentary high-speed internet, hot breakfast served each morning, and a spa and business center, you can expect a great night's stay with service that will bring you back. Visit us on the web at HamptonInn.com. That's HamptonInn.com. And go Bobcats! Top of the ninth here at Bob Wren. The ninth inning is brought to you by CareSource. Individual and family health, ins health insurance. CareSource covered with kindness. As now Toledo will have a pinch hitter here is Brant Hunt from Henderson, Nevada. Sophomore standing six feet, zero inches tall. He was the valedictorian of his high school class at Silverado High School. Has been one for six at the plate with one, or correction, one for six at the plate with one walk and one hit by pitch in six games in 2021. As the first pitch and on a second inning of work is Chase Harris trying to get the hold here for the Bobcats this afternoon. Won't be credited with the save, but will get the hold if things stand where they are. As so far on the season for Hunt, He's only appeared in two games. He's yet to record a hit, only has two at-bats, so for two on the season, and those two being strikeouts. As 1-1 one, one count now to the pinch hitter. The pitch from Harris be grounded foul down the third base line. Something interesting about Harris up there on the mound. He enjoys hunting and fishing. His favorite professional sports teams are the Reds, Guardians, Cavs, and Pittsburgh Steelers. Seems to be in Ohio and a little bit just all over this area guy <laughs> overall. Just basically whatever he's seen, he's like, oh, that yeah. seems like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would say that is his pitch there is for a ball. Count now 2-2. Two, two. To Brant Hunt. And he'll swing right through that high cheese. And he'll take a seat. As Harris will get another strikeout. And the Bobcats now two outs away. From wrapping up this ball game. And wrapping up the series. And we'll have the series 2-2. Two -two after this one. As now. Mason Sykes will come to the plate. And that pattern for Brant Hunt continues. He's had now three plate appearances. All three of them have ended in strikeouts as he continues what's been a tough sophomore season. As Sykes, one for three on the day. As he'll ground that one over the third base to Dolan, and it'll be foul, says the third, third base umpire. And Harris, even though he's had a little bit of a higher ERA, 
on the season, being 7.63 at that. He has done great so far this afternoon for the Bobcats working out of the pen in his second inning of work. He so far has only faced four batters, this being his fifth. He struck out two of them, so and one in a third inning so far. So look to get the hold here for the Bobcats. Is that pitch will run inside and he'll plunk Sykes right there and he'll take a free base. As now we'll have another pinch hitter here for Toledo is number 11, Nikki Winterstein out of Blythewood, South Carolina, the senior left swinging will come to the plate. So far in this series, he's only appeared in game three. Went 0 for 1 in that one. He's a Francis Marion transfer. He was second on the team with a 331 batting average in 2021 for Toledo. He's down um, low 100s now this time. He's struggling a little bit this season based after his last se um, his good appearances last season. Uh, so he'll swing right through that one. As he is a qualified hitter, as he's right above that line. All right, the pitch there from Harris will run a little wide for a ball. So yeah, 128 so far in the season. He's appeared now in 16 games, started in 12 of those. Five for 39 so far in the season. One extra base hit and four walks. 19 strikeouts, that's not what you want to see, is he'll hit that one into right center field, and that one might get down for a base hit, and there it is. For Nikki Winterstein, will get down for a base hit as they'll throw in. Out there was A.J. Roush, and that'll be a double for Winterstein. Good piece of hitting there, and that'll improve that average as he'll try to get above the Mendoza line. As now to the plate will be another pinch hitter here. That'll be Braden White out of Westerville, Ohio, Central Ohio product. Freshman listed at 6 feet 2 inches tall. He got the start in game three of this series, game one of this doubleheader, went one for four, came in to score twice. And so far on the season, Braden White for Toledo, 185 hitter. He's appeared in 10 games, started in seven of those. Five for 27 so far total on the season, 10 Ks and two walks as Harris will try and hopefully not give up any runs here as he's got himself into a bit of some trouble here. As the first pitch, he out of play. To White. White's mother, Ashley, played soccer at Otterbein up there in Westerville, and his father, Andy, played baseball at Ohio Dominican. Seems to be a Central Ohio family at that. He was the Ohio Capital Conference Player of the Year as a senior in 2021, hitting 480 with five home runs and 39 RBIs. Yep. And uh, Braden White himself went to Westerville South High. Uh, he had a 480 batting average as a senior. Yeah, I mean, um, good good numbers right there. I mean, if you're hitting yeah, anything above 300, that's impressive. But 480, <laughs> you can definitely see why he was the Ohio Capital Conference Player of the Year at that. And that's a tough conference, too. I know that much from what I know about Central Ohio baseball. As he's worked himself into an 0-2 hole now as Harris, the delivery... That pitch will be into the left center field gap. Might get down, but no, it'll be tracked down from Harvard. Tagging in to score will be Sykes, and Toledo will play another run there. As the score is now 10 to 3 as they put one on there in the top of the ninth. And now Toledo's down to their final out of this ballgame. As they'll have another pinch hitter here. As number 13, Marcus Stroder. Out of Kalauna, British Columbia, Canadian guy. Junior standing six feet six inches or six feet four inches tall. He has now appeared in every single ball game this entire series. So far in the season, an 091 hitter. He's played now five games, started three of those. His first pitch from Harris will be in there in the inner half of the plate for a strike. And like I said, a Canadian guy. He had 26 walks, second most on the team in 2021, and he played most of the 2021 season as the starting backstop. 
for the Toledo Rockets. He's looking for his first hit in this series since game one. So that pitch will be in there for a strike from Harris, and now Toledo's down to their last strike of the afternoon. And it may be a little irrelevant at this point, but with the sun setting, you see the shadow being cast over the batter's um, over the batter. With the sun still out over the pitcher, makes it really tough to see the ball coming in. Yeah, as that pitch was fouled there from Struther. As he did get the start in game one of today's doubleheader, went over three with an RBI, a strikeout, and he had an air defensively in that ball game. As the pitch once again fouled down the third base line again, and Struther will stay alive. Dolan's gotten a lot of work down there on foul balls that have just just gone outside the uh, third outside of third base. He's gone over and gotten a couple of those. Mm -hmm. And Harris will once again come set at the chest. The 0-2 delivery swung on right through, and that'll end game four and the series between the Ohio Bobcats and the Toledo Rockets. The Bobcats will take this one 10-3 over Toledo. And we'll step, a, or correction, no, we'll keep it here and we'll keep your game summary really quick, short, and get to the point here. And like I said, Bobcats win this game 10-3 over, over Toledo. Bobcats had 12 hits, two errors on the ball game. Toledo has six hits, two errors on the ball game. The winning pitcher for the Bobcats will go down as Brendan Roeder, who pitched seven innings strong, only gave up two runs, one of those being earned, struck out two batters, gave up five hits, walked none, and coming on out of relief there was Chase Harris, and the losing pitcher this afternoon will be Kent State's Cameron Sinski, who went four innings, gave up four runs, three of those being earned, gave up four hits, four walks, five strikeouts, and he'll take the loss this afternoon, and the Bobcats will improve on the season now to 13 and 14, 7 and 9 in MAC play, while Toledo will fall to 15 and 16, and will go to 9 and 10 in MAC play. The Bobcats will be in action once again on Tuesday as they'll travel to West Virginia to take on the Marshall Thundering Herd, and we'll be back in MAC action next weekend against Eastern Michigan for a four-game set there, while Toledo. We'll take on Kent State at home next weekend for their four game set. And we'll take up our, we'll wrap this game up here, Zach. Bobcats just offensive surge in this ball game. Played at 10 runs. What a day for the Bobcats. Yeah, they really did it all. Um, they had a couple of big innings. One of them was an, a response inning where they put up a five spot after Toledo put up the only runs they've scored in, in, the inning, in an inning this game, which was, a t which was two runs. Um, the pitching was great too, as I just mentioned, only two runs. Bobcats only threw two pitchers. Brendan Roeder went seven innings and Harris went two, which is great to see, especially when you just mentioned their game coming up on Thursday. You like to keep everybody as fresh as possible. So they're gonna have a very full bullpen for that game on Tuesday as they don't play again until the next weekend. Uh, for Toledo, you don't see 10 runs very much for this Toledo Rockets team. Their ERA is about around mid four um, they don't they don't log a lot of guys across the plate and they walked a little bit more than you're used to and um, Ohio took advantage every time it seemed they had a free runner they they sent them across the score and they ended up do, putting up putting up a 10 spot in this game that is true and that's also thankful to Will Sturrock who went three for three on the day drove in three RBIs and two walks this afternoon as well as Michael Richardson who went three for five on the day two runs two RBIs both of those guys had great days for the Bobcats and led, led that offensive surge. That'll be all for this afternoon between the Ohio Bobcats and the Toledo Rockets. We thank you all for listening. For our producer, Jordan Bowes, and for my colleague, Zach Mothersball, this is Cade Williamson signing off. We hope you enjoyed this afternoon's contest. Have a great evening, everybody.